Hey, what's up, guys? We are back at it again to see if you guys can beat me live. If you do win, if you're able to join this clan and be a part of the action and destroy me, you get past Ral. I'll be sending the money through PayPal, and I'll be sending seven to eight dollars depending on how much taxes in your country. And yeah, this is something that I've been really excited to do. Thankfully, we've been able to make it happen because Raid Shadow Legends is sponsoring us pretty much every single month for this recently. And huge, huge shout out to Raid Shadow Legends. All the money that we get from the sponsorship not only goes back to you guys with these sponsored streams where we're able to give back money to you, but obviously all of the money goes into my content creation and the videos. So, you know, the daily production of the videos takes 20 plus hours between six editors and me every single day. So to keep that up, obviously, uh, sponsorships help a lot. So huge shout out to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring the stream today. If you guys see the Raiders symbol um, that is under Stay Connected underneath my face cam, um, if you guys support and download using the Raid Shadow Legends uh, link in the description of the video and then go through the tutorial, um, that helps out the channel and obviously it gets us more sponsorship opportunities with Raid Shadow Legends. So huge shout out to them. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that we'll be talking about later on in the stream about Raid Shadow Legends, but for right now, we're going to be playing some Clash Royale, and if you can join the clan and beat me, you guys will get a chance to, you know, get past Rao. Right now, we only have five people, and, uh, we'll see who ends up joining. But anyway, we are going to go and jump right into the action immediately, and see what's up. Obviously, thank you guys for being here. We already have 200 people in the chat. It's crazy. And uh, we're just going to jump right into the games because we're going to be playing for an hour. And um, I could be giving away a lot of pass rounds if I lose every single game. That would that'd be pretty sad. All right. So we're playing against side. We'll see what's up. Definitely going to be playing one of my best decks immediately. I mean, I don't want to lose too many games right now. Last time we were able to beat a couple pro players, luckily enough. And uh, we'll see if we can get lucky enough just like today. Ooh, that would be awesome. I won so many games today when I was playing earlier, recording for a video. I won 10 games in a row. I felt so lucky. But maybe we'll be able to accomplish that today when we're playing against you guys. So when we're playing against a golem deck like it looks like, I generally don't want to go in for a miner in a spot that is obviously going to get tornadoed. So I would instead rather go for a poison and then go for an ice spirit and get the guaranteed damage on the elixir collector. Because he's dropping his Elixir Collector into the spot that I felt like he would Tornado, I just didn't want to deal with that. We can go in for a Tornado here and then click the Golden Eye Dash and lock onto the tower and finish off his Lumberjack. So I think that was worth it. Maybe I overspent a little bit of Elixir. Maybe I'm playing frivolously out here, but that, you know, that's how I roll. I never really want to keep all my Elixir to myself. I want to go and divvy it up and we'll see what's up. I'm going to go for a Bomb Tower here and then I'm going to try to go for an Ice Spirit on top of the Dark Prince. And if we can stun the Dark Prince, that would be exquisite. He's probably going to go for like an Electro Dragon or something. So I'm going to get ready for that. There it is. We're going to go for a Phoenix here. And then we're going to go in for our Skeletons and Golden Knight. reason why we drop our Golden Knight a little bit later is because we do not want to allow him to get the best trade possible that he would have gotten there. We're going to go for a Tornado. And uh, we wanted to make sure that the Bomb Tower could splash onto his Dark Prince and his Golem. I Tornadoed there just to minimize any damage that we get from the Golemites. I didn't want that to happen. So I think I'm at a good spot. I don't remember if he used Tornado on offense or not. I guess that might come back to bite me in the butt. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, I'm going to go in for an Ice Spirit at the river, and then I'm going to go in for probably a Miner directly on top of the Elixir Collector. There's a chance he just Tornadoes this directly to the Elixir Collector. That's okay for me. Uh, if he goes in for a Lumberjack and misses, that's a huge W. Obviously, I want to get back to Tornado. I don't know if I can, but I think I can. Yeah, I'm going to go for Lumberjack. I'm going to drop this Tornado placement against the... I'm going to go for Skeletons. I'm going to go in for the Golden Knight. I was like, wait, I'm going for a Lumberjack. Well, it's, it's kind of like a, a Lumberjack on a different level out here. Golden Knight's going to die, but the Dark Prince dies as well. And we should be able to finesse that Electro Dragon as well. So that's nice. I'm going to wait for the Electro Dragon to die. Then I'm going to go for an Ice Spirit. And I want to have the Phoenix hopefully stay alive. Uh, if not, then it's okay. I'm going to go and set up a Bomb Tower a little bit earlier. Typically, when you guys see a Golem deck, right? You're going to expect your opponent to not have a Lightning if they're going to have a uh, Elixir Collector. They just don't have room for everything. I'm going to switch him up and swerve him and go in for a Miner in the back end. Then, okay, he's actually going to predict it this time. That was unfortunate. That was actually pretty big for him. That was a huge W. Uh, in my opinion, that was like a great, great interaction for him. We're still going to Poison and minimize the amount of Elixir that he can get. And then we're going to try to get a Skeletons down here. Go and stop everything with like a Phoenix and then a Tornado. We're going to eat the Dark Prince. Um, if it even occurs to hit my tower, doesn't look like it does. That's good. All right, so we should be able to finish off the Phoenix. And then I think I can go in for a Bomb Tower here and be okay. So the Electro Dragon hits that instead of my tower. Pretty nice stuff. 
I might actually have to start poisoning on defense. I'm going to go for a miner here, and then I'm going to go in for a goldenite just to damage this down a little bit faster, and then I'm going to go in for skeletons. Wow, that was a really good play. I didn't expect him to make that happen. That, that Elixir Collector and Dark Prince are going to give him a lot of value. We're going to have to do this, and then I can go in for an Ice Spirit on top of the Dark Prince. Uh, if it hits the wrong thing, I might lose. Oh my gosh, this is so scary and sketchy. I mean, I think we can defend this if we just go in for a proper tornado and pull the Lumberjack to the other side with the Electro Dragon to the other side, because then I'm not taking any damage there. But man, this game is really scary. Right out of the jump, you guys are jumping through with one of the more, uh, I don't know, aggressive decks in the game, so it's uh, sketchy for sure. All right, we're going to go in for a Golden Knight here, and I have to go in for a Poison again on the Electro Dragon. I'm going to try to get a uh, Elect Ice Spirit here, and then I'm going to try to go in for Skeletons to go and pull back the Phoenix. And then I need to go for a Tornado so then the Golemites don't do too much damage. Obviously, as the game starts to get into later stages, I do have a pretty big advantage. So I'm going to try to go in for a Miner in a spot that he's not necessarily prepared for. And then we're going to try to have the Ice Spirit allow the Phoenix to jump out of the tower. If that doesn't happen, it's okay. We can start to cycle more Phoenixes here. He's going to go in for a Golem. Uh, that's a pretty aggressive Golem, but it's also a good decision. Since it is a double, triple Elixir, I should be able to just defend with a lot of spam. So... I'm going to go in for a Poison. I'm going to try to cycle multiple Poisons just because I think it's going to be our best bet. Then I'm going to go in for a Phoenix. I should be able to kill his Electro Dragon. He's going for Elixir Collector. That's his first mistake that I think he's made where I'm like, okay, this is huge, huge W for me. If you go in for an Elixir Collector, you're not going to get the Elixir back. So I can just Poison on top of Elixir Collector. Should be able to get multiple Phoenixes down. If I can just get a Night Spirit here, 16 seconds for Manny Name. All we have to do is hold the door. I think we are barely going to get it. Maybe, just maybe, he's going to be able to break through if we mess up, but I'm going to drop a bomb tower here, and we're going to hold the door, so looks like a W. Wow, really had my heart racing there, guys, because uh, when I had to, like, tornado the Electro Dragon and the Lumberjack to the right-hand side, I thought I was going to lose my tower, like, no cap, I thought I was going to lose the first game of the day, I was like, oh man, this guy has uh, played really, really well, so GG and well played, and no hard feelings, you guys will get kicked after the first game, simply because if you end up... Um, just playing the first game, you, you already had an opportunity, and we want to get as many people in the clan to be able to play against me as possible. Oh, no. Oh, really? Really, Cheesecake? You're going to go and steal my monies. Oh, no. <laughs> as you can see, Cheesecake, kind of, sort of, maybe one of the best players in the entire game. He is in the clan, and he is currently number 20 in the world. If you guys want to go to the leaderboard right now. Uh, I'm just going to show you the type of people that we are going to be playing against later today. I will also play against Darian, who is moderating and everything. Um, I do want to play against him. He's a top 200 player that I get a lot of advice from. But look, Cheesecake number 20 in the world is in our clan. And uh, that's going to be a little bit scary. Not going to lie. <laughs> Not going to lie. There will be a lot of great players today. Enough of my stalling shenanigans. Let's jump into the next game and see what we can do. Very, very good game. Extremely well played on our opponent's end. Let's go and jump on to the next one. So, we're going to keep throwing up these battles, and hopefully we can throw some good vile- Oh my gosh, the juicy one's in here too. Oh no. <laughs> so many top players. I'm allowed to play- Yeah, you're going to play me at the last game, Darian. After I lose a million times against all you guys, um, I'm going to be playing against Darian. So, Darian, you are going to get the final game. I will play a game with you no matter what. Bet, lol. Yeah, dude. I mean, hey, you deserve it. You deserve it. All right, so generally when we've got archers, what we want to do... Also, I'm going to be reading the chat and the donations and everything after this game. I promise, guys, sometimes I'm really bad at reading chat, and I'm sorry about that. As you can tell, I'm a little bit nervous in these games because I'm trying my absolute hardest. Like, this is, like, my peak performance right now. I do not want to lose any games right now. It, it could rack up to be quite a bit if we lose every time. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, we're going to go in for a mortar here. It should be able to snipe the princess. The skeleton king is going to stay alive, which is really good. I want to wait for the princess to die before I do anything else. I actually do want to go for a fly machine opposed to dropping the skeleton king ability because I'd rather not take any damage from the balloon. And the skeleton king still gave us a shot on the tower. It wouldn't have given us that much damage if we clicked the skeleton king ability because it would have went right into bats. The bats were out of cycle, so he has to go in for goblins, which aren't necessarily like the most optimal trade for him. So, this guy is going to have bats, goblins, a, a pretty weird deck that I haven't really thought I would see. Alright, well, we'll go inside minor court placement because we probably don't have tornado. We'll have to wait and see if I'm going to eat my own words here or if we're chilling. And then I can go in for a cannon cart in the back. So, this is looking really good. The one thing I dislike about this is I kind of forgot that he had balloon, not going to lie. Anyway, we're going to go in for our archers here. It's going to get raged up. He might be able to arrows these archers or zap them or something. I'm a little bit scared, but we don't even take more than one hit. 
Okay, archers, I appreciate the Clash Royale over buffed you because I made a massive misplay and we got bailed out. Wait, the cannon cart's gonna help us out. Holy, holy heck, dude. And we can arrows last second on the, uh, the, the princess and still end up hit, hitting the tower. Okay, so the difficulty arises in this specific matchup when he starts to go in for goblins and stuff and forces out all my elixir. And then I look at my elixir and I'm like, I have nothing for the balloon. So this is not going well. Because if I go for a fly machine, then I only have archers. But I think I'm going to go and pop the ability and then go and scramble the lumberjack and hopefully kill it. So then it does pop on his side of the map. So then he can't rage up his balloon. Optimally, we want the lumberjack to die on his side of the map. If it doesn't, I'm going to cry a little bit inside. You guys won't see me cry on camera, but afterwards, you guys just know I'll be crying. All right. Uh, can that not hit my tower? Of course it will. Of course it will. All right. So we can split archers. I think that that's our best bet. And then we want to go in for a skeleton army here to finesse the lumberjack. We also do want to go in for arrows just to finish off the bat so it doesn't end up hitting off the balloon. And we're splitting up our archers. Oh, yes. That was calculated. That was... That was definitely me playing really well. Yep, that was uh, a very good tactic that I never I never considered, but we take it. We take those. If he's got freeze, I'm dead. So, it was nice knowing you guys while it lasted. He's going to snowball. Doesn't have freeze. That's a vibe. This is a vibe. So we've got the skill king rushing through in the left-hand side. We've got the arrows for the princess and hopefully some of the goblins. Okay, nothing. Nothing. That's fine. That's fine. I didn't want damage anyway. I didn't need it. It's, it's okay. I'm so confident with my situation. Of course, of course. All right, we're going to go cannon cart here. Should be able to kill everything. Man, this game is going the distance. Why is every game so riveting? Why are you guys not letting me win? Y'all are ruthless out here. Straight up. Okay, we're going to have to go in for a uh, skeleton army again. That does pull the balloon, right? Okay, yeah. I was like, uh, is that not pulling the balloon? Because it should pull the balloon. And then it almost didn't pull the balloon. I was like... Yeah, I think I know that placement. Please don't let me get it wrong. <laughs> That'd be pretty scary. Not gonna lie. So two for two right now. We're on a good streak. Let's vibe. Let's keep going through. Woo! All right. Also, huge thank you to Frankie Wenning. Thank you for $50. Dang, dude. I didn't give you a proper shout out at the start. You are a legend and you're helping me stall a little bit. <laughs> Thank you so much. By the way, if we stall a little bit, we're going to play more than just an hour of games. If I stall for like five minutes, I'll add an extra five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever else. What do you say, sir? Time for a rematch? Ben ages, says Lou Frog. Luna, I will play against you. No matter how long it takes, I will play against you. I think I have you on my friend list. So if you're on my friend list, I'll play against you regardless. Tiger says, you always make my day better. Dude, you always come up with kind comments in the comment section. I freaking love you, man. It's just so nice to like wake up or go to bed and then like immediately see your comment. And then it's like, oh, wow, someone like really cares about me and loves the videos. Like every time there's just a couple of you guys reliably that hit me up with such kind comments. And it means a lot. I read all the comments. I'm going to read all the comments on this YouTube video as well, this live stream. Even if you're watching later on, I'll still be able to read it. Anyway, jumping on to the next game, No Mediocre. I also, you know, might do some games where I'm running triple draft against some of these pro players because I think that would be more entertaining and more fun or maybe, you know, just a potential a chance for me to win. Okay, so this guy hit the highest possible arena. I don't know what his skill level is, but he seems like he's going to probably be good at the game. So generally, I want to go in for a mortar on the other side. Uh, I just want to be able to pull the Electro Giant as far as possible. And this mortar does pull the Electro Giant. You guys might think that it doesn't pull, but it does. Okay, uh, buddy, can we not do this? Buddy, homie, don't do it. Don't do this. Don't, don't be that guy. No one wants to see that guy running an Electric Giant Mortar deck. <laughs> or no, Electric Giant Ram Rider deck. Uh, he's going to he's gonna just ruin my mental out here. I feel it. Anyway, we can go in for the Mighty Miner ability and then hopefully kill the Golden Knight. All right, that did not work. That did not work. Oh! Oh, that Mortar! Oh my goodness, that was crazy. All right, we take those. That was awesome. All right, so we're gonna go for an Ice Spear on top of the Golden Knight because he probably drop a dash. Maybe he doesn't. Does he not? Oh, he's too clean with it. He's too clean with it. He doesn't want to waste his elixir. Okay, I'm a little bit scared because if he Electro Giants and then he Ram Riders and then I don't have, I have one building. I have one building, my dudes. This is gonna be kind of tough. I don't even have Ice Spear and Cycle for the Ram Rider right now. Uh, a little bit scuffed, not gonna lie. All right, we're in a Miner. He loses the Phoenix, so that's a big W. W's, 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 W's in the chat. Yes, yes. Uh, we go in for a Mortar here. A little bit scared of his Ram Rider. We know it's lurking in the shadows somewhere. Where is it going to be? Where is it going to cause the misery? 
So the Ram Rider needs to die to Mighty Miner and Ice Spear. Oh, okay. Hello, Darkness, my old friend. I love you. Nice to see you again. I'm going to go Mighty Miner on the other side. This might be the worst play ever. I was kind of hoping he would Ram Rider and then it would go right into the Mighty Miner. It didn't really work out. Feels bad, man. Okay, so generally the thing that I like to do against Electro Giants is this. If we can go for an Ice Spirit here and the Ice Spirit somehow freezes everything. Oh, that was juicy. We go in for a Mortar again. And the Ice Spirit was able to allow us to defend everything with just Archers, I think. Are you serious? You guys, you guys just saw that, right? I defended two Electro Giants, a Lightning and a Ram Rider with just Archers. That's overpowered. Okay, that was actually probably pretty common that you guys would expect that to happen. <laughs> You're like, Jake, why are you dropping your Miner in a spot that it could get tornadoed to the King Tower? Yo, I don't have an answer for that. I'm just stupid sometimes. That's, that's what's up. I guess I do have an answer for it, right? Uh, okay, we got a finesse. We got a finesse. We got a finesse. I think we're okay. We can go in for this mortar. Uh, it should stop everything. We're also going to have a mighty minor counter pushing. The Phoenix doesn't give him any damage, really. All right, we minor here. What happens? How do we win this? The mortar's on the tower. That's a huge W. Okay, 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 okay. I like it. I like what we are seeing right now. I appreciate the value. Oh, he's going in for a uh, bar barrel. He's going to go Electro Giant onto this. And then we go in for a Mortar because we would keep up the Elixir Advantage. And the Mortar should target onto the tower because the Electro Giant gets too close. Yep, that's exactly what I thought. And now I think the Mortar takes your tower if I play it well enough. Obviously, I didn't. So I didn't take his tower because I'm bad, but it's okay. Uh, I'm going to go in for a Mighty Miner here. And then I think I can go for a Poison depending on what happens. I think we cycle multiple Poisons. I think that's the vibe. I'm going to go in for Goblins and I'm going to go Ice Spirit. And then I'm going to go Miner in the safe spot because he doesn't have any way of catching it because his deck is a little bit slower. I probably shouldn't be speedrunning this game. If I speedrun this game, I have to play more games against you guys. More opportunities to lose. But I'm fearless out here, okay? We don't care. We want to speedrun games just for more maximum memes. Very fun deck from our dude here. Uh, Jerry, you have a great deck. It's cool. It's unique. And it's fun. So, um, yeah. Maybe it would have beat me if I was running a different deck. But I'm pretty well equipped with my Mortar. I know how to counter Electro Giants with the right placements. And if you guys mimic that, even if you've got Mighty Miner into double Electro Giants... Just use your Goblins and Ice Spirit and Archers, and you're going to be able to damage down Electro Giants and play with them like Play-Doh. They don't do anything. All right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Woo! All right. We're a little bit scared. We're a little bit scared because uh, a lot of you guys are better than me in this clan. A lot of you players are better than me. Also, I'm sorry that we kick you guys. If you... All right. So just moderators and everyone here. If someone beats me, you have to have Discord, and you post your Discord in the chat. If you beat me, you post your Discord name, and you post your Discord number in the chat and my moderators will message you they'll find out your paypal info and i will send you money tomorrow not after the stream because i'm gonna go to bed but as soon as i wake up tomorrow i'll have the info for the paypals and i'll send you guys money so that's what's up i'm always switching decks you guys will never know what deck i'm playing all right there isn't there isn't a chance all right all right this deck it is filthy filthy my dudes this is the most disgusting deck you'll ever see like it is so dirty so, I'm sorry for whoever has to play against me right now. <laughs> this is the most fun deck that I play whenever I lose like 400 trophies in Clash Royale, which happens quite often when I test out brand new decks. This is the deck that I play to get them all back and crush people. It doesn't make much sense to people that haven't played it before, but man, is it fun. The amount of aggression that you can pile on with this deck is remarkable. So I'm in a mini pack here. I think it fully counters a Hog Rider. Also, my Dark Prince just jumped like over the river and through the woods to Grandma's house he went. Jeez. Okay, so somehow we didn't counter the Hog Rider, I guess because it was dropped in the middle instead of dropped directly down the river. Anyway, we're going to go for a Giant in the back. Um, 2.6 Hog Rider. Interesting. So generally, Mini Pack of Hard counters it. Uh, I'm glad that I have minions. Minions are going to be very strong in this matchup. If we can bypass his cannon and then have the minions locked directly on tower, especially when they're raged up. So what we're going to try to do is go for our minions here off to the side with the Giant. Okay, please, minions, just don't go ahead. Do not go ahead. If you go ahead, we're going to wind up dead. Also, we can go for a Rage on top of the Musketeer to damage it down. And then we can maybe even go for Arrows if I really want to. But I think the Winions are going to win. I think Winions are going to have him for Din. Oh, yeah. That is a Finn Musketeer. So we know he's going to go for a Hog Rider. So we're going to get geared up with the Mini Pack whenever he drops it. And we're going to fully counter the Hog Rider. Wherever he does. I think he's going to drop it left-hand side. So it's way a Dark Prince in the right. Um, he's not doing it. Okay, this is a little bit triggering. Uh, I guess I'll cycle a Heal Spirit and try to get to an Elixir Collector. Always drop your Elixir Collector in the safer side where they have less fireball damage. Yo, Slime Move, I'm going to give you a proper shout-out after this game. Thank you for the donation. I really do appreciate it, man. 
So he's gonna go Hog Rider. This fully counters the Hog Rider if you drop the mini pack fast enough. Unfortunately, the Ice Spirit might jump. Okay, no. Hog Rider didn't get a single hit. Minions give us a counter push. Worth, 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 baby. Okay, I don't think the minions are gonna be able to allow the mini pack to get hit. Oh, that was really close. If I raged it, it would have been so worth. Because I would have been able to cycle a card too to get back to another laser collector. Slight misplay on my end, not going in for the rage, but I didn't expect him to let it get it so dangerously close to his tower. All right, so we're gonna go giant. I have to go heal spirit because he could go for a hog rider. Uh, I'm gonna go for an elixir collector here, and then we'll see what we can do. I want to be able to bypass this. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna try my hardest. Never, 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 never. I mean, never cycle the mini pekka. Keep that mini pekka for the hog rider every time. You guys know it. You guys know what's up. All right, we're gonna go in for the arrows. Hopefully being able to hit skeletons as well. Optimally, let's go! Making those plays. Dark Prince should hammer the tower. That's it. Mini Packa locks onto the Ice Spirit, hits the tower twice. That's big damage. No, only once. Okay, that was really well played on his end. All right, this guy is really making me play my best and I don't appreciate it. I do not appreciate this behavior. Not in this juncture, my dude. All right, so I'm gonna rage this up just so the skeletons don't distract me or do too much damage. I think it's good to cycle anyway. Uh, a little bit scared, but I am up a little bit of damage here, at least. We're going to go for a giant in the side that he's likely going to spam some elixir in. Yep, that's what I thought. All right, we're going to do this. Really, really, really good log. Disrupting the mini pack and making me a little bit more tilted. But this is where we overwhelm him. This is where our memes are no longer memes. This is where the dreams become a reality. Double giant, double domination. We go in for a mini pack here and a dark prince on the other side, and I think he might be able to swindle our man out here. The Dark Prince is going to give us a lot of value. We can go in for a Rage with the Minipack and the Giant. We've got two Santa Clauses on the map, and we are delivering the Presence of Pain. And that is a lot of damage. So if you guys can't break, two point, break through 2.6 Hog Rider, what you do with this deck is you stack up Elixir Collectors, get an Elixir Advantage, and when they overcommit just once, you take their tower. This guy is really, really good. Also, I think he was on a mini account. He says mini ATZ, so I don't think this is his main account. Yeah, it's definitely not his main account from... The, the, the decisions that he made, I think that's his second account. So that guy was really good, and we played against someone on, on a mini account. All right, all right. Crazy games today. Woo! Y'all are making me think. I had to play that perfectly because I had to make sure that I got two giants on the map because if I went directly into his musketeer spam with cannon, I would have never broken through. I had to not be on an even playing field. I had to have an elixir advantage to win that. Okay, okay. All right, guys. We are... Here, making it happen. All right, next game, going to be triple draft. Triple draft for y'all. Woo. All right. Is it in the friendly battle? No way it's not, right? Oh, yeah. There we go. Guys, join the clan to search for it. You have to have an opening. Yeah, I, I kick someone every time. All right, so <laughs> in triple draft, we are going to go and pick the Lumberjack because the other cards, they're kind of just, yeah, you know, they're not utility based. The Inferno Tower can't be a win condition, but the Lumberjack, it can rage up my balloons, my Ram Riders, my Hog Riders, pretty much everything in the game. So these are the best spells. I literally have the best spells to choose from. I could choose Snowball or Arrows or Log, and all of these are great. Arrows generally give the best value. Um, they just give you value against everything in the game. So no matter what he has, like Minion Horde, I'm still going to get value. If he's got Dark Goblin, I still get value. Um, whereas Log, it's like, oh, I can't hit a Minion Horde. And then, you know, the Snowball, it's like, oh, well, I can't kill a Dark Goblin. So I don't have that problem. Um, I think with my Synergy right now, I want to pick a Mortar because it's able to pull things and it's just a great card all around. Uh, I want to go and take Skeleton Barrel probably because it will be a win condition, but I like Guards just because they're such a strong card. Definitely want to take Musketeer. It's overpowered. Um, I already have some pretty good answers. I kind of want bats. Ooh, these last two seconds, I need to go fast. We're going to take poison, and then I'm going to take minor. Wow. Looks like I actually have a real deck. <laughs> Let's go, guys. We drafted minor poison mortar. That is unbelievably lucky. I am S-tier luck, man. I am S-tier luck out here. This is like the greatest luck of all time. Not going to lie. All right, we're going to go in for a, a guards here to protect our mortar. Notice how the mortar is not going to get targeted by the Barbarian Barrel. It targets on top of the guards instead. Very, very nice for me. Oh, man. I'm still so scared when I match up against pros because that's going to happen any second. Like, each game that we don't play against a pro, we are going to get closer and closer to play against more pro players. It's scary, man. You just know that these guys are ruthless. They're waiting. They're waiting to wreck me. Um, all right. Clan still full? Yeah, the clan will be full, but people will get kicked after every single game. After every game that I play, someone will get kicked, so there's going to be one spot opened. So, I mean, it's going to be hard to get in, but the, over the course of an hour, you will have around 
I would say 30 opportunities. 30 opportunities, 30 games. You'll probably get to play, yeah, I, I don't know, around 30 games. It depends. Depends how, how fast these games are, actually. Okay, so this guy went for a Mega Knight. I'm a little bit scared right now. I don't know what I want to do. I think I kind of want to go for a Mortar on defense. It is going to go and pull the Mega Knight. I forget what the other cards that he has is or are. So I'm going to go in for a Musketeer here as well, just to damage down the Mega Knight. It also will activate King Tower, I think. Okay. I didn't get the Lumberjack down fast enough. That was such a good Lightning. Well played. He did finesse me. He's getting closer to the Pass Rail, boys. Oh, no. <laughs> Please don't do it to me. Don't be the first loss. Don't let it happen. Not when I have Minor Poison. The Lightning is a little bit obnoxious. It is able to kill my Musketeer, so I have to be wary of that. However, I have Minor Poison, so I can make comebacks. I wish I had Log in this situation, but it's not bad. All right, what is his other spell? He doesn't have Arrows and Snowball, so he probably doesn't have a good answer to Bats. I forgot to look at his spells because I was too concentrated on picking my stuff fast. Fine. It's okay. It's always calculated. So we're going to go Bats on top of the Fly Machine. I don't know if he anticipates that. I hope he doesn't. It would be nice if he didn't. Nice. All right, we can go for a Musketeer up top, and then we can go in for like a Lumberjack or maybe go Miner here. I want the Royal Ghost to die. I want to save the Lumberjack for the Mega Knight that is inevitably going to come down. We aren't super scared about this. I'm not traumatized by our situation yet. Maybe I should be, but I'm not scared yet. All right, where to go for Bats? He might go for an Electric Spirit. I could make a prediction. I don't think it's worth it. Glad I did it. I think we just kill everything with the Lumberjack. The Lumberjack should be able to kill the Mega Knight without too many problems. We can do this with ranged up guards and then maybe go in for a Lumberjack and then maybe even go in for like bats afterward. I don't know if he has a... Okay, he got back to another Mega Knight. A little bit unfortunate for us. But the Mega Knight might die on his side of the map, which is huge. Very nice. Because the Rage... Oh, the Rage is not good. All right, we can go Mortar here and then go in for a Musketeer and then go in for guards afterward depending on what happens. Uh, he missed the Lightning. That's huge. Oh, that is bad. This is bad news, Bears. I didn't... Oh, <laughs> mamma mia. Not what we wanted two times in a row. Okay, okay, okay. Come back initiated. Come back initiated out here. You could Mega Knight Lightning me, and if I had activated King Tower, I think it would be vibing. But I don't have that potential anymore. This might be my first loss, guys. This might be my first loss. Please don't let it happen. Please don't let it happen. I already do this. A poison. I'm not going to spend any extra elixir until we need to. All right, the bats are putting in work. Lightning's coming down to give him damage. A little bit scared. All right, it looks like I have to go all in on the other side, maybe. We'll have to wait and see if uh, this still works out. We'll go for a high musketeer and say hello. This is super sketchy. You know, this might be just characterized off of misplays on my end and a deserved win for him. That might be the case. I hope that we can still make it happen. We got to make this happen, guys. We go for Lumberjack here. We're going to go for a high musketeer on the other side. Minor inside corner. Poison afterward. Seems like he's trying to go for lightning cycle, maybe. But he hasn't found many opportunities to do it. All right, we're going to do this. Fiero the Electro Spirit. Okay, we did hit the Electro Spirit, but not really. <laughs> Feels bad that he didn't drop it immediately. He waited a slight second. That was really smart of him. Go for a minor here as well. Looks like we're going to lose to Lightning. GG, man. Ah, so uh, just to review what I could have done differently, I could have Lumberjacked here, and it would have pulled the Mega Knight immediately, and then the Lumberjack would have allowed the Lumberjack King Tower activation. So the Lumberjack would have pulled the Mega Knight if I had expected the Lightning, and then I would have activated King Tower with the Mega Knight. Not fast enough reactions. Failed myself there. But you know what? First loss. So congratulations to Parky Poo. Parky Poo is the first victor. Very good player. Played extremely well. Deserved the win. Well played. So Discord, send your Discord, and then uh, you will be getting money tonight or tomorrow, whatever it is. And also, Parker, after you send your information, please leave the clan so then you give uh, you give an opportunity to more people. And GG, well played. Um, how do we play against them? You join the clan, and then if you are part of the action, you guys can play against me. My first loss was unfortunately triple draft. Maybe. I won't do triple draft again. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, please ta play me tag. I'll do anything. I've been in every stream and like every video. Love you, Jake. It's a slime move. Yo, dude, I just want to make sure that everyone has an equal chance. The only person that I'm also going to be allowing to play against me regardless of everything is the person that's moderating all the games today. And I think that's relatively fair. It's just giving him a chance to play against me regardless. 
Um, he's also a pro player, so he should stomp me. But there's a chance I can beat him. Maybe. Looking for a chance to play against you. Love you, bro. Says Angel. Thank you, man. Thanks for stopping by the stream as well. Jeez, there's so many people here. There's 1,400 of you guys. That's crazy. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. Anyway, we're in a bar barrel here, and I want to go in for archers. The sandbar is probably going to lose that. He's going to arrows. That's fine. That's great for us, actually. All right, so we expect this to be a Lava Hound Balloon deck with either Freeze or just Lava Hound Balloon regularly, right? So we want to go in for the Mighty Miner here just to force out some extra Elixir. If we get a Tombstone, that's pretty good for us, actually. Because we saw minions earlier as his best answer to Graveyard. If he doesn't have minions in Cycle or if he only uses minions, wait. Yeah, we can just Arrows those. That's really, really good. Also, remember when I didn't Arrows on top of the Electric Spirit prediction last game? I think that was kind of a bad sign for me. So we're going to go in for a Phoenix on the right-hand side. And it hasn't hit Double Elixir yet, so this is a little bit sketchy, but I think it's worth it. Especially if he tries to defend this. Alright, we're going to Freeze. I think it's worth because the Phoenix is able to kill the Valkyrie and everything, and now he has to go all in. I don't know if this is the best play in my arsenal. Okay, it is. Great. He shouldn't have arrowed that. He should have arrowed my archers, and then he would have been in a much better spot. But because we got him to over-allocate and defend a tower that he didn't need to defend, then we're in a great spot. So if you guys are ever wondering what you did wrong or whatever, I'm trying to point it out so you guys can get better, just like how I could get better in the last game, and I messed up and I lost. I always try to review my mistakes and see what I could do better and try to win. Um, so yeah, if you had just saved your arrows and arrowed my archers, then I would have had to cycle a couple more cards to get back to my phoenix, and that would have put me in a much more precarious position. Just a heads up there on that end. So we're going to go in for a tombstone to distract the Inferno Dragon for a short period of time, and then we can get either... Yeah, I think I'm going to go in for a Mighty Miner Bomb, and then I think I'm going to go in for nothing else. I think everything else should just die if we split our archers. Okay, I didn't, I didn't even need to split my archers. The reason why I split them is because I didn't want to give them arrows value. So if he arrows us on one archer, we can use the other archer paired with like a graveyard or a go or a barbarian barrel and get a lot of a good trade there. We can just get a great trade with a one archer counter push. That's generally all we really need. I'm going to go for a freeze here to try to start to work on the other tower before we take the, the right hand side. Because if I take the right hand side too soon, what happens is then uh, the king tower will start to shoot on my graveyard skeletons that are trying to take his other tower. So I made sure that there was no opportunity for my man to be able to break through there and uh, walk away with a win. Let's go, guys. The redemption arc is real. That's what's up. That's what's up. Can I get a, some advice on my deck? If I play against you, I'll give you advice on your deck for sure. I will definitely give you advice on your deck if I play against you. Why is the clan full? Because um, we're kicking someone after every single game. All right, cool. So Parker ended up getting the money. Oh, well, he didn't get it yet, but he'll get it tomorrow. Also, if you guys want to subscribe to the channel, definitely make sure to stay connected for when I do these streams. I do this stream once a month, actually, and uh, you'll have plenty of opportunities to play against me again. If you don't get me this time, you'll probably get me again in the future. Just want to give you a heads up on that, that I will be doing this a ton, a ton in the future. It doesn't look like anyone ever leaves the clan. I showed you that we kicked a couple people after we beat them. Um, I can show you again after this. Would you consider yourself a pro? Well, by definition of pro, what I would say is plays the game for money. I don't play the game for money, so I don't actually compete in live tournaments and earn a prize pool anymore. I did win $5,000 in King's Cup going undefeated and beating the best players in the world, but that was in 2017, guys. So you could say I'm a retired pro, but I'm not a pro anymore. I used to be, and I used to play this game 12 hours a day, and I've spent hundreds of hours playing, thousands of hours playing, uh, and I love this game but I am not a professional player anymore just because it's more fun creating content and just enjoying the vibes. So since we're playing Sparky, we're always switching up the decks every single time so we're staying unpredictable and also just having more fun that way. We're going to be playing pretty aggressive. This is going to be a deck that we take the power to our opponents. We punish them and we attack them at every single time. Oh, the audio, audio glitch? Okay, sorry about that. We're fixing the audio glitch right now. If there's ever an audio glitch, you guys let me know. I'm, I'm quick with it. I snap my fingers. We snap the audio, and we Thanos snap the audio out of existence. Oh, my gosh. He tried, to, he tried to debate me, but we're clean with it. We're clean with it. Oh, the Golden Knight. He tried to go minor, so then the Golden Knight wouldn't dash. That was pretty smart, actually. If I you know, wasn't messing around snapping my fingers, <laughs> I probably would have clicked the Golden Knight dash. Not going to lie. You guys helped me. Distracting me distracted my opponent from being able to distract my Golden Knight. Wow, that was like multiple layers of distraction out here. That was pretty crazy. 
I love you guys. This is fun. This has been a very fun stream for me. I, I just can't wait to keep doing this every month. And uh, I just want to say thanks again to Rage Shadow Legends for sponsoring this and making it possible. And then also, obviously, all the money that we get from the sponsorships goes back into the channel, makes the videos better, and it makes the quality of the content that we put out every single day, which takes 20 plus hours to create, actually a feasible thing. I wouldn't be able to do it without sponsors like Raid. So a huge thank you to them. Um, if you guys want to support me or support me through, through Raid, you guys can download the game. The game is in the description of the video. And if you download using that link, what happens is you complete the tutorial and then Raid's like, oh, he completed the, or people complete the tutorial that are part of Sir Tag's, you know, channel. Then they're like, Sir Tag converted. Sir Tag is uh, a good uh, streamer for Raid. We're going to have more sponsored streams for him in the future. And then if I get more sponsored streams, then guess what? We get more money to put into content. Every dime, every dollar, every ounce of money that we get from sponsors goes back into improving the content. And that's my promise to you. Whenever I get a sponsor, it will only be used to improve my content. Anyway, back to business. We are kind of currently losing the game because I went on super sellout mode and just talked to you guys about what was going on in, in Raid and everything instead of really focusing on the game. So we'll get back to business and see if we can win this one. Anyway, we want to go in for a Goblin Giant, and we want to get a great Golden Eye Dash. Generally, this matchup is a lot better for us in Single Elixir, and it gets way worse in Double, because he's able to afford all of his distractions then. We'll still see if we can win. It's obviously going to be considerably more difficult, but can't say I'm not going to try. I will try my hardest. All right, so he's going to go in for a really good Tornado. He's likely going to go in for another Minor Poison, so we want to save our Mini P.E.K.K.A. for the Minor. Uh, this is a little bit sketchy. We have to go Mini P.E.K.K.A. on the Goblins. I hope that none of the Goblins hit my tower. That was actually insanely good on his end. We're going to have to rage that up, and I think I lost. You should be able to minor poison log me. Yeah, GG. I really wasn't focused in this game. My bad. I thought we would be able to win it because I th we had such a good start. I was like, we got this easily, and uh, I messed up. So my fault. My bad. I deserve to lose that one. Congratulations to him. How should I convince my parents to let me get past Ral? Um, I don't think you should. I mean, if you can get it, then get it. But, you know, I, I, I think that maybe do some chores if you're younger or whatever. Um, maybe just be like, hey, I'll do some chores. I'll help out around the house or something. That's something that you could do. But, you know, if they're not going to buy you Pastoral, it's just, uh, it is what it is, man. You'll eventually be able to afford your own Pastoral getting a job and stuff. Um, got back into CR, pushed from 5K from the vids. Hey, congrats, man. Congrats. That is a huge W for you. 5,000 trophies is pretty tough to uh, get to at the very start. Like when you're starting off the game or just coming back, so many people have um, been playing the game for a long period of time, so coming back and just pushing back up is nice. All right. Here we go. So we're going to go Goblins directly on the Miner, because if you're dropping a Miner, it's always going to be in the safe spot. These games, I am trying super hard. Sir Tag, I want to smoke you, fam. Well, maybe you can. Who knows, man? Who knows? Now I'm 18, I got my own money, and I can afford my own Pastor Al, says Jeremy. Yes, sir. I said I was going to focus up, and what do I do? I immediately let a mortar lock out of my tower. This is not smartness, guys. This is full-blown stupidity from me. But it's all good. It's for the vibes. It's for the vibes. The Viberinos. Oh, the Golden Knight. It's going to dash onto the tower right now. Oh, he barely got a miner down. Well played, well played. So this deck, it is a complete hooligan deck. You look at it, and you are like, it is an Electro Giant deck. But no, it is a minor Electro Giant deck. And this is played at the top of ladder. This destroys control deck players that have archers, and people are not necessarily prepared for it. Like, this guy's deck right now, top ladder deck. It's got mortar, it's got minor, it's got poison, it's got archers. Well, what does it lose to? It loses the people that have Electro Giant, minor, and arrows. <laughs> this is the meme. This is the future, my man. So I can activate King Tower here with the Baby Dragon, I believe, unless it targets the Electro Giant. Okay, yeah, we activate King Tower. That's very good. Very nice. Baby Dragon should be able to lock onto the tower for some good value. And then he's going to lose his archers, actually. Ooh, that is spicy. He's going to have Inferno Tower. So we're going to use the Electro Giant's health as a resource. The Electro Giant's tanking for the tower. Notice how the tower's not targeting the Miner. It was targeting the Electro Giant. So that gives us a lot of time to rack up damage with the Miner. And that's how this deck works. You get a lot of value with the miner, and then you force out your opponent's bad answers that you can arrows and just get even more value from. I don't want to click the Golden Knight dash because I'm not in a hurry to give my opponent value. Um, seems interesting to me. Might be able to go and click the dash, actually. I think it's going to be able to kill the Inferno Tower and then force out some extra elixir, maybe. I hope it gets a hit. I needed it to get a hit. Let me rephrase it. 
<laughs> Alright, we're gonna go for arrows here on the firecracker immediately just to finish that off so it doesn't touch my electro giant. My precious, pristine, healthy electro giant boy. You cannot die today, my dude. Alright, so we're gonna go miner again. Just generally, this is the game plan. This is the strategy. We're gonna go in for a golden knight to catch the miner. And then we have the golden knight counter pushing. He's gonna go wall breakers in the middle right here. We could tornado them together. Then use the inferno tower. And then hit the tower. Oh! That was so smart. Let's go, guys. See, when I lose a game, I ascend. I, I have to think through my strategy because I wasn't focused in the last one. I had to think through exactly what my opponent would do, and I got it. That feels good. I'm really proud of myself there because I saw the wall breakers before. I'm like, I know he's going to do it. I know he's going to drop it here, and I caught him. We caught him. We caught the Pokemon. All right, so we can maybe go in for, like, another Golden Knight here to dash onto the Inferno Tower. So then if we dash onto the Inferno Tower, the Electro Giant should be able to get on top of it. And then the Electro Giant should be able to reset the Inferno Tower. And then I think he's not going to be able to stop the E-Giant. So just as a blatant de declarance of dominance, we're going to go in for a Tornado to whisk the Firecracker in for the win. Let's go. Kick him now. You guys are so ruthless. You are, like, kick daddy 2017 brick. Why do you guys want to kick daddy? That's so mean. That's so mean, guys. Don't kick daddy. That's not very nice. I love you, daddy. We're going to give you some hearts, man. GG. GG, bro. Respect to you. You played well. Um, That was fun. Ooh. Clan is full. Nope. See, daddy was kicked and then hype is joined. And then I'm going to show you again for proof. I'm going to prove you. All right. Marmar was kicked and then Alex joined. Oh, man. That was crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, what is Toxic saying? If you want to get in game, you have to do that. Um, what do you mean? I'm confused. Oh, people are stealing other people's games. Yeah, that's really toxic. <laughs> it's like dragging someone else down with you. If they can't get me, they snipe someone else. Oh, man, that's like ruthless. Yo, guys, do that to the pro players so I never have to play against them. That's the idea. Don't snipe the people with lower trophy counts. Kappa. Guys, don't, don't do that. Snipe, don't snipe anyone's trophies or don't snipe anyone's games. Oh, man. What time is it for you? It's 1030 right now. 1030. How long have we been streaming for? I don't even know. I haven't even looked. The time has been passing so freaking fast. I, I'm still going to be streaming this. I'm going to be streaming this for longer than two hours. Originally, we blocked out two hours. I love Raid Shadow Legends. I, here's the thing, guys. A lot of people that are YouTubers just play whatever games they get sponsored by. I generally only accept the games that I generally really like. So you'll see, I have grinded Raid Shadow Legends to pass level 40. And <laughs> out of every YouTuber that you actually watch or are friends with or whatever, you will not find anyone that plays Raid Shadow Legends more than me. There is not a single one in Clash Royale or anyone else besides maybe Ash who has a dedicated channel. Anyway, on to the game. We're going to go in for goblins here, and we will see what happens. Um, tag, I have a job and got money for past rail, but my parents be annoying sometimes, says uh, Coral Turtle. Yo, I don't think your parents should like be able to enforce like what you buy um, with your own money that you earn. I don't know. Maybe you should talk to them about that. Be like, hey, I earned this money like working. Um, should be able to spend it how I want. I don't know. Or just like talk to them in a polite conversation from that perspective. Also, we're losing this game, and I wasn't focused, and I feel like an idiot. Wait, this is a bad matchup, right? He's got rail recruits. This is going to be really, really tough. What am I going to do? All right, we have to go for archers here with the phoenix. I don't even think we kill the balloon. I don't even think we kill the balloon. It's going to get a hit. Oh, no. This is tragic. Tragic. Tragedy has befallen upon us, my dudes. The firecracker is a huge nuisance. Oh, no. Okay, so when I play different decks, I need to really focus up because this is not looking good. He's got a bomb tower? My dude said no. He said, Jake, you think you're going to break through with Royal Giant? How about we break down everything that you earn? Oh, this is awful, man. This is a horror movie. Straight up, bro. All right. I don't know how I'm supposed to kill the balloon. I guess I probably want to go in for goblins. We'll see what happens, though. All right. So he's going to go monk. Can we mischievously maneuver the monk to the other side with our fisherman? I think so. Oh, no. <laughs> I pulled a recruit. <laughs> Not what we wanted, my dudes. Surprisingly, not what we wanted. All right, so we're going to go in for the Royal Ghost here. Monk should die for... Oh, no, nope, not dead. Not dead. Not dead. All right, so the Royal Ghost is going to be able to tank for the Phoenix Egg, maybe. I don't even know. He's got poison, though. Oh, Phoenix, okay. All right, I'm vibe with you, Phoenix boy. 
All right, we're gonna go goblins. We're gonna log. Please don't use your monk ability. Please don't use your monk ability. Please don't use your monk ability. <laughs> Stop it. All right, we're gonna go in for another royal giant. If we don't, we lose. I need to keep up the pressure. We need to pile on the pressure. Otherwise, I'm gonna lose this game. All right, we're gonna go in for archers here. He's probably gonna go for royal recruits. Can I log them and finish them off or get a royal giant hit? I need more than one royal giant hit, my dudes. I need two. Okay, that might be enough. Let's go! Woo! Okay, all right. That was a little bit scary, not gonna lie. I was like, I'm definitely dead. I'm definitely shelling out more money. I'm de definitely spraying on the money to you guys. <laughs> that would be three losses. Last time, I only lost twice for the entire hour. Right now, I've already I've fulfilled my quota of losing two times. Oh my gosh. All right, so we're 45 minutes into the stream. I said I was going to stream this at least for an hour. That was a very, very crazy game. Holy heck, y'all. You guys are not messing around. You guys are trying to mess me up right now. Woo. All right, all right, all right. That was super scary. Um, happy, happy holiday, everyone. Yo, happy holiday to everyone that is actually on holidays. I'm not on a holiday right now. At least I don't know any holidays. Actually, if you Google holidays. Wait, what day is it? Let's, let's take a look. Holidays today. <laughs> National Be Heard Day. Alexander Graham. Jose uh, uh, Santos Day. There's there's like so many different days. National Cereal Day. National Cereal Day, my dudes. How did I not know? <laughs> there's always a holiday. There's all. I, I firmly believe that you guys can be happy. If you're choosing to be happy, like you can find things that you can be positive about in life. And if you're trying to be negative, you can always find things to piece up. You can always find something to be argumentative about. You can always find something to be upset about. I think that's just one of those things that happens a lot. People choose to be upset a lot of times when they can just ignore things and try to focus on the happier things in life. Personally, if there's ever anyone ever negative in my life, I don't interact with them anymore. I just don't want to be around people that are super negative or don't want to be around people that drag me down or, or try to argue with me all the time. Um, I try to be around people that bring me up and make me positive and then also challenge me from a perspective of like, you know, whether it's something that I might not like, but we go and do it like escape rooms. My girlfriend makes me to escape rooms and stuff that are pretty challenging for me. Um, a whole bunch of like trivia stuff and crosswords where I never did that before, but then I started to like it. Anyway, on to the next games. I know I just dallied a lot, and I, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I wasted a lot of everyone's time. Um, please kick some people for giving a chance. Yeah, yeah, we are kicking people. We are kicking people. Don't worry. My friend Caden and I used to watch your videos every day last year before we graduated. Thanks for making it. Um, thanks for making English worth it, says Angel. Dude, let's go, dude. I, it's really cool dude, that I can see people... Um, around the world watching my videos that don't even speak English as like a first language or maybe they're learning English or maybe they just want to just try to learn some new words or something. It's so cool to see that. I um, just yesterday, actually, before I went to bed, I showed my girlfriend a comment from someone from um, South Korea and the guy was like, hey, my English isn't very good, but I love watching your videos and it helps me improve my English. And then I showed it to my girlfriend. We just sat there smiling before going to bed. It was just like such a wholesome, good feeling. Like, I really, really love hearing that. And I love hearing that, you know, my videos make your day or your life in some aspect a little bit better. It's really, really cool. So thank you, man. Love from Australia? Hell yeah, dude. I can't wait to go to Australia. So I went to Canada. I went to Whistler to ski with my girlfriend. And in Canada, in Whistler, everyone there was Australian. And apparently there's like an exchange program in Canada where people from Whistler will end up um, con like switching with Australian people. And then d the Australians get to go and ski in Whistler. And then people from Canada and Whistler get to experience like Australia and get to experience everything that's great there. So it's really, really cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I think that a lot of Australian people are just generally very nice. And by the way, you guys have the best accents in the world. There's no doubt about it. Australian and British accents are like S tier. By far, some of the best accents ever. All right. Um, would you say Australia is amazing? I've never been to Australia and I want to go. My girlfriend, however, is scared. She's like, the bugs though, Jake, the bugs. And I'm like, but Australia, the kangaroos, babe, the kangaroos. Uh, I don't know. Maybe one day. I want to travel the world. I want to have like 
vlogs with you guys and show you what I do and where I go. And maybe that will happen eventually. I'm kind of excited to do that, hopefully, down the line. All right, so the... I, oh! Oh, that was sick. I've never seen that before. How did the archers kill an ice spirit? How? Were the, was the ice spirit placed too close to the archers or something? I'm confuzzled. All right, we're going to go for a miner here. We're going to finesse the cannon. We're going to get him to drop something. We'll poison immediately. So if you guys are wondering what the best decks are, if I really wanted to win every single one of these games and have like a super high chance of winning, I would be running Minor Poison. I'd be running this Minor Poison deck and the Golden Knight Minor Poison deck that I played as the very first game. Those would be the two decks that I like the most. I think the Golden Knight Minor Poison deck is absolutely unfair. It is also the deck that I posted a YouTube video on today, a full-length YouTube video. I post daily videos at 3 p.m. Eastern every single day. This is just a surplus extra stream that I'm doing for fun with you guys, so hopefully everyone's enjoying it. And uh, yeah just hope that we can do more of these in the future use bug repellent oh yeah is bug repellent super effective pokeball move against po uh, the the bugs we don't want to get attacked by bee drills out here man we're not about that life all right so it looks like we can just poison and log and walk with the w so very clean and fun win let's go on to the next one ggs and good vibes I may not be able to 1v1 you, but I'm a faithful viewer of your channel. Austin, I reply to you every day, man. I love you. The fact that you take the time to interact with me, talking about your trips, um, all of your journeys. Your, when you broke your iPhone, I was right there with you, man. I was sad. And then when you got it replaced and you traveled across the world on your, on your trips, it made me really happy. And then also you going to Hawaii, having the burgers. Like, dude, I remember all this stuff. And uh, it's cool that we can have a personal connection together and just, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not like I am able to have this interaction anywhere else for a Clash Royale or just anything else on the internet. Like, I've played so many different video games. I played StarCraft 2. I played Age of Empires. I played all these different games. I even played Pokemon competitively. I never had a connection with the community like I do right now as a YouTuber. And it's just, it's special. I really love you guys. Uh, poison decks are bad. Uh, they're actually really overpowered. They're really, really, really overpowered. Poison does the most damage for its elixir cost right now. Uh, to towers. That's so kind of unfair. I am from Brazil and I do not speak English, says Ruan. Well, thank you for being here, man. Even if you don't speak English as your first language, your English was pretty good there. And with the Q&A, we are not going to end with a Q&A. We're just going to keep playing games throughout. So you guys will still get more chances of getting money from me and getting pass morale. Hopefully, you know, I, I want to give away more pass morales, but I want to give it away to people that earn it. You guys got to beat me, all right? All right, all right, all right. We're going to go in for a miner here. We're going to go in for archers as well. And it does not look like Nick is having a good time here. We can go in for a log, finish off his Dark Prince, and then also hit his Lumberjack. Kick the offline people. My uh, my moderators are kicking the offline people. The thing is, there are not many offline people when everyone is trying to play against me. You feel me? You feel me, my dude, Arenos? Please use wizard, sir. I really like to see some pro player like you use wizard. So <laughs> here's the dichotomy about wizard. It's very, very good at lower arenas, but it is terrible when you reach the higher arenas. You rather have like a firecracker, archer queen, archers, musketeer, cards that give you more value for their elixir cost. The wizard gets outclassed because it has very, 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 very low damage for its elixir cost, and it has low range for its elixir cost at four. So from that perspective, you would really do not be, want to be running wizard if you want to get the maximum utility from your card. You'd much rather be using other ranged cards. All right, so we're going to go and click the Mighty Miner ability to go in the other side, and then hopefully have the Miner tank. Yes! 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 Mighty Miner going to take the entire tower. I believe in you. I believe in you. Buddy, don't disappoint me. No! <laughs> Failure. My disappointment is immeasurable. Your girlfriend is behind you. Nah, dude, she's not. She's not. <laughs> you troll me. I can also just look at my, um, you know what I could do? I could just pull up my, my stream, look behind me and be like, bro, you're, you're trolling me. I can see that. And then not even look behind me and not feel like a fool. You made me look like a fool. I looked behind me. So you did win that interaction against me. That is, that is a positive elixir trade in real life, my man. That's a positive elixir trade in real life. All right, all right. It's my first time here, says me, uh, what, ha? Huh? Yo, dude, thanks for stopping by. If it's your first time, hopefully you're really enjoying the stream. Lots of love, and hopefully uh, hopefully this is a vibey stream for you, my man. All right, so I'm hoping to drop some Elixir Collector. If he doesn't, I could be in a traumatic position. I do not know how I'm going to win this. I am actually a little bit scared, because this is a lot of stuff coming out. I do not have good anti-air answers. I just have archers. I think 
I should just take a tower and ignore the rest. But that's not how I play. All right, we're going to do this. Wait, I'm going to lose. I actually lost. I should have taken the tower. I knew it. I knew I should have. That's a huge fail. <laughs> Because I didn't have any anti-air answers to kill the, um, the the Letter Dragon and then also the Phoenix. I massively messed up there. That is the biggest fail all day. It does happen, but I didn't have any answer to the, Ele the Electro Dragon and the Phoenix. So I should have sacked a tower and then taken the... I, I, you guys saw it. I told you I should take a tower, but my pride got in the way. My pride got in the way. My fault there. That's why um, if you play against a lot of air cards with that deck, you're going to have... Almost jumped into a uh, wrong game. Anyway, that was my fault. That was definitely my fault. Um, might Bomb Tower plus Poison? Yeah, dude. Um, even though I stopped playing the game, I still watch your videos. My main deck is Hog Lightning Firecracker. Yes, sir. So we lost three games so far. Three pass rounds are going to be given away today. Let's go, let's go. You guys have to have PayPal, though, by the way. And you need to have Discord. Okay, okay. Um... We're gonna go in for a Phoenix here and we will go in for a Miner. Are you excited for level 15 cards? Um, so that's kind of like a loaded question. I don't think that level 15 by itself is good for the game, but if they add extra features to the game that make level 15 good, then I'm here for it. They have to add a balanced feature to the game that improves gameplay and makes the experience more fun for everyone in a balanced way that isn't like just giving someone at level 15 a huge advantage. So we'll see, we'll see. We'll see if it works out. <laughs> I mean, let's suspend belief that it's bad for a second and just see what it's going to be before we make a conclusion. I dislike making conclusions before I actually know what's going to happen. We need a 2v2 league? Yeah, that could work. Is gift card possible? Gift card is not possible. I am sorry, sir. Um, gift card would take too much time and everyone's in different countries. So if I do a gift card, then not everyone will be able to get it, if that makes any sense. Generally, you want to be able to give something quick, easy, fast, and fun, where I can just give away the um, PayPal donations, and then that's what's up. All right. Kick offline people. Um, we are kicking offline people. All right, all right. I want to join, um, says Sing. What's up, what's up? Um, Ice Spirit should walk to Archers. Ar Archers don't kill him after the buff. Archers don't kill... Oh, no, Archers do kill... I Ice Spirit I Spirit does end up killing um, Archers. It, in that specific interaction, I don't know what happened. I don't know why the Ice Spirit died to my um, my my Archers. It was kind of weird. So we're going to wait a couple seconds, and then we're going to go and pull the Piggies, and then we're going to Ice Spirit here. So we're in a very, very good spot. I'm going to go in for a Miner here, because I've activated King Tower. I know that I can reliably use my Phoenix on top of the Fly Machine to counter it. And then he's going to lose the Fly Machine. He's probably going to go in for a lot of Elixir here, so we can go in for Skeletons as well. And then I can go for an Ice Spirit afterward to guarantee that the... Oh, that's going to dash on my tower if I don't go Golden Knight, because I just wasted my 2-1 Elixir cost card, so he clicks the Golden Knight dash. That makes sense. The Miner in the back. It's going to be harder for him to counter that. He does arrows. Smart decision. All right, let's think everything through. We're thinking everything through right now. Let's go, let's go. We can go for a Bomb Tower here on top of the Royal Hogs. And then we shall see what else we can do today. Do we want to do anything else? Or are we chill? Yeah, we chill. We chill. We can go for an Ice Spirit. We can go Miner in the back. We can go for a Golden Knight. He's going to have to go Royal Recruits most likely, and then the Golden Knight should be able to dash on the tower. I don't think he's going to have enough Elixir for this. Oh, he's going to go for a building. That made sense. I did not expect you to do that, sir. All right, so we're going to go for an early Bomb Tower. The Bomb Tower should be able to splash into the Recruits on the other side, and then I can Phoenix on top of the Fly Machine that is obvious. And then we can still get Skeletons down if we need it. I don't know if we do. I'm going to drop it anyway. This Ice Spirit and Bomb Tower allow me to clutch up, then I should be fine. But I'm not taking as much damage as he's hoping. What do we do here? We don't have Tornado back in cycle. Bit problematic. We're going to preemptively poison. We're not going to do anything because he's going to go in for Royal Recruit, so we're going to click our Golden Knight Dash afterward. Then we're in a Bomb Tower. And then the Miner's still on the tower, giving us a ton of damage. The Bomb Tower is able to kill the rest of the Recruits. We can maybe go in for a Fly Machine counter with the Phoenix. or predict him to go for a Fly Machine soon. We want to go for Skeletons here. Fly Machine counter with a Poison, most likely. And an Ice Spirit on top of the Golden Knight. It should dash on my tower, actually. Really bad for me. Well played, well played. Fly Machine will die inside the Poison, so that's big. I'm not back to another Poison, though. The Golden Knight's not going to be able to dash immediately. 
Wait, it should not... Uh, didn't dash. A little bit bad. We have to go skeletons, poison immediately, and then tornado everything. This is going to be the glorious tornado. Oh my goodness, baby. That was disgusting. That killed everything. All right, we're going to go in for Golden Knight here. And we should be able to dash on top of the zappies and hit the tower. That should be game. That should be it, boys and girls and everyone else watching. The piggies are coming through! And there is nothing that Toxic can do. He is going to go in for a lot of spam, but it should go right into a phoenix, allowing me to crush it. And then maybe Miner here. Finish everything off with the skeleton and ice spirit. So, so far, we have lost three games. I do not think we're going to lose this one. We will bounce on with a victory and go to the next game. Let's go. We have two miners on the field. How many miners can we get? That's another question. Multiple miners. More miners equals more win. More miners equals more win. Two miners on the tower and only one crowd. It is what it is. Best miner poison deck with for no champions. The best miner poison deck with no champions is going to be this deck, but you will run knight instead of mighty miner. And there's a video on that that I have. Clash Shroud came out March 2nd, 2016. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it wild to remember that it's taken that, or it's been that long? Oh man, it's insane for me to think that. Very, very well played, uh, by the way. He was a great player. We just had a great matchup. All right. What's the tactical difference between placing a card close to the king tower and then placing it in the far corner in the back? The reason why you drop far corner back is if you want to bypass the building. If you drop it here, it's going to be inside corner. But if you drop it far corner back, it'll be towards the edge of the arena. You can be more likely to bypass buildings with minions and cards like that. It's generally a little bit better. Also, if you have a building on the map, you want to drop something like on the edge. So then when they go in for a spell like a lightning or a fireball, your unit's pathing this way and the building's here. So then the building does not get hit with the spell as well. But if you drop your unit here, it passes directly into the building. So then the building can get hit with that unit and your tower at the same time. So that's the problem. That's why I dropped some units in the, off to the side. Hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully that improves your gameplay. All right, so getting back to the game, <laughs> I gotta have to focus up a little bit here, no doubt. I can't let that bandit dash on me. We should be able to finish it off with one elixir ability, baby. <laughs> that never gets old, unless you're playing against it. If you're playing against it, you're like, stupid one elixir ability. It's champions are subpar cards with overpowered one elixir abilities. That's what they are. <laughs> Archer Queen without the ability is useless, my dudes. <laughs> That's crazy. How do you give pass morale to players that win? I give it to them by giving them money through pass morale. Um, I give them money through PayPal and then they buy pass morale. And I cover the expenses and everything. That is what's up. Depending on their country, I will give them different money. Um, depending on the taxes for their um their app store all right prince you're not gonna hurt my archer queen not with a zap or anything like that get away oh my gosh the bandit's just gonna walk <laughs> that must be unbelievably tilting the prince doesn't charge the bandit does a dash and well the phoenix it crashed it crashed all the way down plummeted from heaven all the way to the archer queen's paradise so we're going to go for a skeleton army on the miner every single time. He should predict that and drop like a poison or a spell. If he decides not to do that, then that's obviously extremely good for us. We're going to go in for a dark prince here on the right-hand side, and we will see what he's going to do. Okay, this is fine. I think I can go for a giant here in the back and then start to defend with an archer queen and see what he's going to do. I don't know. It's a weird deck from our opponent for sure. Not something I really expected. We should be able to get a skeleton army down so then the bandit gets crushed, and then he should go for a miner into that maybe. Oh, he's going to go in for a minions counter with arrows. Okay. Interesting. I should start going for giant graveyards at the river more so. As you can see, I'm not a typical giant graveyard aficionado. I do not play this deck as my main. But generally what I know that you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go for Archer Queen here and then have the Archer Queen um, force out Elixir while you giant graveyard the other side. And that's the way that you're supposed to play it. That is not how I played it. I just want to tell you guys how you're supposed to play it so you don't play it like me. You won't be stupid. You'll be successful. <laughs> well, I guess I was stupid and successful there. Um, yo, Sir Tag, I love watching your videos. They're very entertaining for me and my family. In your opinion, uh, in my opinion, you're the best CR content creator. Wow, that's a huge praise, bro. There's a lot of great Clash Royale content creators, so thank you for saying that I'm the best. If you had to choose a city in Australia, which one would you visit and why? Um, I would probably visit exactly where the Australian Open is for tennis, and I would watch that. I don't know where that is, but I would, I would go exactly where the Australian Open is, and I would watch that for sure. All right. 
So we're going to switch it up and run a different deck. Wait, I lost with this deck. I need to get redemption with every deck I lost with. Every deck I lost with, I need to win with. All right? I lost with this. I lost money with it. It's got to earn me some money right now. It's got to give me the opportunity cost of winning. Let's go. <laughs> lychee. Oh, my girlfriend loves those. If you guys don't know what lychees are, you go to like an Asian family market, essentially. You go pick them up. They are so delicious. <laughs> um, if you get a super sour one, it's not very good. But my girlfriend got me into them and they're really good or they're bad. It's kind of like a strawberry, right? Sometimes the strawberry is like great and sometimes it's mushy or, or maybe it's blueberries actually blueberries are more so that um either s tier or like trash tier you don't know what you're gonna get they're super flavor flavorful or they just taste terrible blueberries are more so like that than strawberries i think strawberries are generally okay no matter what anyway getting back to business we got a little bit sidetracked there it's all good it's it's happening it's happening oh no is this another graveyard guys 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 not good the dude has a, a Barbarian Hut, and we have Royal Giant. If this is Royal Recruits again, and I'm running Royal Giant, I am going to be traumatized. Wait, no, I beat the Royal Recruits player with Royal Giant. I thought I lost with this deck, but I didn't. I'm an idiot. <laughs> again, I am impressed by myself. <laughs> oh, man. So we can go in for a Royal Giant here on the other side of the Barbarian. So I think that's going to be our optimal strategy. Meanwhile, we can go for a Phoenix to Persevere. We can't kill the archers, which is really bad for me. But I can at least kill the Golden Knight with the Phoenix. Optimally? Maybe? I don't know. I, I wish I knew. Well, if we logged, we might be able to kill it. I'm not going to right now. I'm just going to take the damage. He definitely has a graveyard deck. Oh, never mind. How do I defend this? I think I'm dead. I don't think I have any way of stopping this because I'm pretty sure the archers at 1 HP lock onto my tower and I'm dead. Archers are just so unfair. Oh, no. Well, GG. Yeah, this matchup is not good for us. If he's going to end up having archers with Barbutt against Royal Giant, it's kind of kind of a 100% matchup for him. Not necessarily the smartest decision on my end to run Royal Giant and be predictable and telegraph that I was going to run it. But yeah, this deck card counters me. Well played. Yeah, that was super smart, thinking on the spot and then running a deck that's good against us. That was, uh, that was really smart. If I had said that I was running Minor Poison, it wouldn't have been as counterable, but this is a very, 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 very good deck construction for me to beat a Royal Giant deck. You even have arrows for my archers. Yeah, I'm just dead. <laughs> this is why you do not telegraph that you are going to run a specific deck, because then people will know to snipe you and you will just get finessed. This guy is brilliant. To, co to quickly come up with a deck like this on the spot to beat us when I just said I was going to run Royal Giant, and he didn't know because I wasn't running Royal Giant before. That's just super smart, man. Like, out of all the people that we lost to today, I am most impressed by this. Because being able to build this deck immediately is not easy to do. It is not easy to do. I don't know. Like, building it in, like, a couple seconds and then getting the game? That's crazy. Easy way to get past Rail? Yeah, dude, he just farmed past Rail off me. Well played. Very, very smart deck construction there. I couldn't do anything. <laughs> that was, like, the most hopeless game of my life. I was like, wait, what am I supposed to do? Aim? So, I think we've lost... How many games so far? Let's take a look. All right, so we started... Started here. One, two, three, four losses. Woo! You guys are crushing me today. Well played, well played, man. I'm impressed. So we've already hit the hour mark, but I told you I was going to do longer than that. I'm not going to lie. We're doing this definitely, definitely longer. Also, I just want to say a huge shout out to Raid Shadow Legends again for sponsoring the stream. If you guys want to download using the link in the description of the video and you play past the tutorial, that helps me. And all you have to do is play the game, get past the tutorial, do that for free. You don't even have to spend any money or anything, but if you do spend money, then it helps me out as well. But like basically, if you just get past the tutorial, it shows Raid Shadow Legends that you like the stream and then we'll be doing more in the future. So that is a huge benefit to me. That is so smart, Lychee. I'm actually happy... Out of everyone that beat me today, I'm happy Lychee won because first off, S tier fruit. Number two, you're a freaking legend for building the deck that fast. Anyway, I challenge you. Come on, Sir Tag. We're still playing. It's past the hour mark. I'm still playing more Clash Royale for you guys. I want to give as many people the opportunity to play against me as possible. And then at the end, after I win this game or hopefully win this game and then play another one, I will be playing against Darian, the pro player, to end the stream. You guys think I can beat the pro player? Do you guys think I can beat Darian? 
One of the best players in the game? Y'all can let me know in the chat. I will have to focus up and see what we can do because he is really, really, really good. It might be the most difficult match all day. Not going to lie. A little bit scared. All right, so I'm going to go in for a freeze here since we already have the Phoenix like really close to his tower and he's running an Electric Spirit Fast Cycle deck. Generally, if you can get a Phoenix on top of the tower, you will get a really good head start. Generally, I would not advise people to do that, but when you add, when you see what your opponent's deck is, and you know that they have limited answers in their arsenal, then you can go in for a freeze and single elixir and know that they can't punish you that aggressively. Like, I know that this guy doesn't have, like, an Electro Giant deck that he can drop at the river when I'm down elixir. At worst, he can maybe go for a minor wall breakers, and I can just arrows the wall breakers, eat the minor, and only eat 500 damage, right? So, like, when you're, when you're playing a matchup like this, you identify what your opponent's win condition is and how scary it is if they're up elixir. And if they're up elixir just a little bit and they're running a cheap cycle deck that can give you a little bit of a paper cut, you don't have to worry. If it's a big monstrous Frankenstein push, him going in for a Royal Giant or an Electro Giant, that's a different story. I have to calm down a little bit, but since it's a cycle deck, we're just going to swipe his tower and we're moving on to the next game just like that. Woo! Don't forget to enter Kurt Sir Tag when you confirm the monthly pass. Um, the content is premium. Yeah, all the money that I get from Pass Rao, um purchases that you guys use Creator Code Sir Tag for, that money goes back into my content as well. So a huge shout out to you guys for doing that. Can you recommend any deck for Arena 14? I've been there stuck for a while. Yeah, so my best recommendation for Arena 14, type in Sir Tag CR 7,500 trophies. And if you type that in on the YouTube search, what will happen is, my deck that I hit 7,500 trophies with, which is free to play, no champions or anything, you guys can use that at any point in Clash Royale, and it will allow you to push up the ranks. By far one of the better decks to upgrade, it's got Rail Hogs, it's going to have Firecracker Archers, really easy cards that just do a lot of damage when played well. And if you guys are wondering, how do you win against Mega Knight with Rail Hogs, that video shows you. I think I beat like four or five Mega Knight players with Rail Hogs in a row. So if you guys want to watch that video, Sir Tag CR, how to hit 7,500 trophies in Clash Royale. And if you type that in on YouTube, you will get my video. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We got it. GG and well played to our dude. Heck yeah. Woo! Black Train is a beast, by the way. Very thankful for him. If uh, we didn't have moderators buying the stream, it would be pretty much impossible. All right, so Darian, you able to play a game now? You ready? If Darian is able to play the game after this next one, then we will play against him. And you guys will get to witness me playing against one of the better players in the world. If Cheesecake is online, I will play against him as well, but it doesn't look like he is online. It looks like Cheesecake dipped. Um, but yeah, Darian, if you guys haven't seen, finished 486 in the world, 800 in the world, and he's just, he's so good. He is one of the best players in Clash Royale. So if we can beat him, that would be pretty insane. Um, one more game? Okay. One more game, and then Darian afterward. Where is my next deck? One second. I am going to... I'm going to cook real quick. I'm cooking. I'm cooking up a deck real quick for someone that I... I'm not going to play this against Darian, but I'm going to play this against someone else because I really like this deck. This is a deck that no one is really necessarily prepared for because it's pure memes. Well, it's not really pure memes. It's just really toxic. So we're going to run this. We're going to run... Cool, we cooking out here, guys. We cooking real hard. If you guys see this deck in one of my videos, you will probably hate me if you play against it. Just because it it is really, really, really difficult to play into if they get any advantage because they can just steamroll and take a tower. All right, so we need one more card, and we got it. This deck is unbelievably unfair. And it's also played at the top of the world, so whoever is unlucky enough to play against this, be ready. Be ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Enoch. Okay, so Enoch is one of our moderators. He is one of my favorite people, and I did this to him. <laughs> He's going to unsub. <laughs> He's going to leave me. He's never going to talk to me again. I'm sorry, Enoch. I'm sorry, dude. I, I am actually a horrible human being for doing this. Oh, no. I thought I was just going to get some random person. I, I, I didn't think we were going to get Enoch. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. So we're going to go in for a heal spirit. I think that the, the, the Golden Knight dashes onto my tower. There's nothing I can really do about that. But the Musketeers kill everything else. So this is great. I am so stoked for this game. He's going to have Golden Knight. He's going to have Minor Poison most likely. But our deck is disgusting. 
So he's gonna minor. That's fine. I'm fine with it. I'm okay with it, Enoch. We're going to go and knock on your door and roar with our archers. And then I think he's going to go in for an Ice Spirit most likely. So if we can get a Bandit down and kill the Ice Spirit with the archers, that would be so nice. If I can Rage on top of the Ice Spirit, that would be insane. Ah, uh, it didn't really work out. I think Raging on that would have allowed the Bandit to like get through the tower and hit it. But I didn't really play smart enough to do that. It might still... Ah, uh, I should have Rage for sure. For sure, for sure, dudes. Light misplay there, but it is what it is. Enoch is cooking. Enoch is definitely cooking. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to three Musketeers. We optimally want to split one Musketeer in the lane of the Phoenix and the two in the other side. So when he poisons, he's not going to be able to poison the weaker tower. All right, so he's going to go in for the Tornado and pull them all together and say, Jake, I hate you. You're very dead with the three Musketeers. I feel you, Enoch. That was a good play. I respect your decision. But at the same time, you are spending a lot of Elixir, Enoch. Ooh, okay, okay. This is a good Elixir trade. I need to have enough Elixir for Archers for the Miner. We need to have enough Elixir for the Archers for the Miner. I will have enough Elixir. Great. He can't go for a Miner. He might, but he can't. He's doing it. Enoch's trying to cook, but he's getting thrown the book. The Archers are slamming the door in his face. Very nice. So we're going to go in for a Bandit here. We're going to try to bait out some extra Elixir, and we can go for a Giant behind everything and just try to make a big push. So generally, in this type of situation, we go Giant. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. That's going to dash on the tower. Okay, that's great. Huge. I right, want to go for a monk. Maybe he tries to cook. I don't know. I don't know what he knocks going to do. I'm going to drop three musketeers up top. He might tornado and poison. Ooh, yep. He's got a tornado and poison. That's fine. Enoch, you spent a lot of elixir, my dude. You spent a ton of elixir, my dude. All right, wait. The bomb tower should target the monk, right? Should target the monk first, so the bomb tower will die. We can keep the archers alive and keep the giant alive. No. Enoch! You did not just do that! Enoch! Bro! Bro, don't do this to me, man! That was a violation! That was terrible! You violated the rules! The rules of the duels! He just activated King Tower! Oh no! Why? Why is he so good? Oh no! He did not just do that to me! Alright, he's gonna tornado in something. So I'm gonna go giant. He's not gonna get it. He's not gonna get the cook. He's not gonna get the book. Okay. Alright, we need to do something crazy here. Bomb tower's gotta die. It's gotta go. It's gotta go. Bye bye. Alright, we can kill the bomb tower. We can fi finish off the phoenix egg as well. He's gonna poison as well. Can't get anything from this. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Very nice. We take those. Alright, so we kill the miner. We kill the golden knight as well. That's a W. W in the chat. W in the chat. We're making one big push. This is all we have. If it doesn't work, I'm dead. All right, so we got to go like giant here. Ban it as well. Have to get a heal spirit down and then a monk in front. If I don't get the monk in front, I'm cooked. I think I'm cooked. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. For one short second, my dudes. 23 seconds remaining. My giant might be able to rage up and hit the tower. It might be able to do something. The bandit's locking on. We can monk here. We can go archers last second. Oh no. Oh no. 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 Bro. He missed. I'm going for this. That rage damage. My rage damage won me the game. Oh. Yo, my heart stopped for a sec, bro. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Oh, that game was intense. Crazy stuff. Wow, guys, give some love for Enoch in the chat. He is one of the best moderators that I've had for so many years. 
he's just a great guy. So guys, even though he didn't win, he won our heart for supporting us for that long. Give him some love. Give him some hearts in the chat. And if you're in the comments, put some respect to Emot or Enoch in the comment section. Very, very good player. Oh no, Darian kicked him. <laughs> no special treatment for our moderators. He just gets kicked. I love it. <laughs> all right, Darian, put up the... Uh, Darian, we're going to play against you. We're going to play against you, all right? You ready, Darian? You ready to rumble, bro? You ready to rumble? Whew. All right, so we're going to cook with, with Darian. He's probably not ready. Darian, I'm going to cook. I'm going to cook, bro. This guy is one of the best players in the game, and I am running the Dirty Despicable Electro Giant Miner deck. <laughs> Darian, you better be ready. You better be prepared for this garbage deck to come at you, man. He's going to go Goblins. He's probably running like a Hog Rider Cycle deck or a Minor Poison deck, so that's why I'm running this deck. Just because I want to be the Ultimate Cheese Master. I got to be the Ultimate Cheese Master if I'm going to beat someone better than me. So we're going to go and run a Miner. And the No, we're dropping it here. Oh, he's running Giant. Wait, does he have giant double minions? That would be so funny. If he's running giant double minions, please. Darian, I know that's one of your decks. Please run it. Please run it, sir. He's not doing it. He's not giving me the value. At least the miner is able to put in a lot of damage. And if he's got his own miner, we can activate King Tower here with our tornado. Also, the mega minions should go towards the cannon. That zap might have been good for him. I don't know. Nope, it was bad. Darian, you might have had to cycle there, actually. That nah, wasn't bad. He probably had to cycle a card. He probably knows better than me. I'm just uh, I'm a dummy sometimes. He tried to predict our goblins. We do not goblins. We go in for arrows instead. And I could tornado the miner, but I'm not falling for the shenanigans because I know that you don't have a building. So I'm in a great spot. Darian's already calling the good game. Guys, we might have cooked him. We might have cooked him. I don't know. We're going to go in for the tornado and then we're going to go for a miner and then we're going to go in for goblins. We're going to eat the archer and we're going to try to just destroy him with the goblins. Gary the goblin, come on. Live large. Give us the value. Give us the win, Gary the goblins. Woo! <laughs> okay. I got a little bit lucky. I, I completely cheesed Darian because I know what decks he plays. And I built this deck specifically for him. I'm like, if he runs giant double minions, I've got the arrows, the tornado, the baby dragon. I've got the electro giant. I thought he was going to run giant double minions. He didn't run it. He also didn't run minor poison, which admittedly, no matter what deck I run, he's going to beat me if he runs giant. If he runs minor poison at this skill level as a two top 200 player, I would never beat him. So I'm thankful that he ran either Hog Rider or Giant Minions, and that's what I wanted. So I got it. I got the W. Maybe. I, I shouldn't be celebrating too prematurely because he is a lot better than me. He can make comebacks against me, and um, he's beaten me when I've had hard counters to him before. Let's just, let's just put it that way, all right, guys? Um, even though I have some of the fattest hard counters in existence, sometimes I still lose to him. Um, anyway, uh, in this specific matchup, since I have arrows for his archers, I don't think he's going to be able to break through. So if you guys want a deck that you can beat someone 10 times better than you, this deck that we're playing right now has that potential. I can't guarantee that I'm going to win right now, but I assume I will. I'm going to go in for a tornado so then I can pull back the Mega Minion, and then I'm going to arrows immediately on top of the Mega Minion, the Giant, and then also the Goblins that are coming through. When he decides to go in for a Miner, we're able to go for Goblins, captivate it, and we took two towers to zero because our matchup was so stellar. So I'm sorry, Darian. I, you know, I, I didn't really play fair here. I stole a chapter from our friend, uh, Lichi, that ended up building the counter deck to me. And I was just like, we got to, you know, we learned from Lichi. We learned from our loss. We're going to build a deck to beat someone that we should not be beating. <laughs> so that's what's up. Let's go. Lichi might be better than me. I don't know. But uh, in this specific situation, um, Darian is definitely better than me. I just wanted to clarify that um, if you guys were wondering. if we're Because sometimes when I make comparisons, people extrapolate it and stuff. I was sniped? Yeah. Yeah, dude, I sniped you. Got him. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It had to be done. It had to be done. Is Cheesecake online? Should I play against Cheesecake? Should I play against the other top 200 player? If Cheesecake's here, I will play against him. If not, then I won't. Cheesecake, you want to play? Where are you at, Cheesecake? Cheesecake, throw up a request. Throw up a request, Cheesecake. If you don't, if someone snipes it, then I'm going to move to the raid thing. <laughs> but, um. No! <laughs> so I guess it wasn't possible to get cheesecake. We'll play one more game against someone else. 
Um, we'll play one more game against someone else just for the last game because I don't want to leave you guys empty-handed. I will play one last final game to end the stream. This is it. Win or lose? Can we finish off strong against Fortnite or or L, or are we going to get destroyed? He actually has 7,500 trophies, so he is in the highest arena. He's probably not going to be a cheesecake level player, but he is really, really good. Also, in the future, if you guys want to see me play against more pro players, like maybe I could get Mohammed Light on or someone else, and then do this in the future, and then play against them, and then each time they beat me, I give them money. How, many, how much money would I lose in a day? So much. But yeah, if you guys want to see that, and you guys like me having pain and suffering, um, then, then let me know in the comment section, and I, I'm willing to do that in the future as well. Anyway, um, not a really great matchup here. He's going to have Earthquake as well, so it's going to be problematic. The thing is, you can go for a Tombstone in the opposite side of the Hog Rider in the EQ, or the, um, I guess the Royal Hogs in the Earthquake, and get a decent trade. It's just something to keep in mind in case you guys didn't know. I'm going to go Phoenix, last possible second, so we can finish off the rest of this stuff. We're going to go in for a Tombstone other side of the Royal Hogs, and we'll see what happens. Not an easy matchup. This is actually going to be a very, very challenging game for me. I don't know if I can win this. So Tombstone right now is able to pull, and notice how he misses the Earthquake. That specific placement with Tombstone will fully shut down those piggies if you drop other stuff with it. Obviously, I don't have enough elixir to drop more stuff, but that's the best possible placement that you can do. If you guys want to play at the highest possible level, that's what you got to do if you want to walk away with wins. Obviously, archers are ridiculously overpowered, so we got a lot of damage there that I don't think I should have. I could freeze, but it's too much elixir when the graveyard still isn't alive, so I'm not going to do that. All right, so we want to save our Mighty Miner for his Archer Queen typically. So I'm going to go in for a Barbarian Barrel and have that roll on the tower. I think that the Royal Recruit dies, and I Barb Barrel on top of the tower instead of dropping the Barb Barrel on the Royal Recruit because the Barb Barrel, we want that to extend as far as possible so that I can get tower damage. If we just drop it on the Royal Recruit, we're taking damage, and it's not really worth it. It doesn't really give me much. All right, so we can go for Archers. Uh, we're going to go in for a Tombstone here, and then we're going to go for Archers on the other side. If he goes in for a Log, that's totally understandable. That's actually the right play. I think that with one archer alive, we can still go for the graveyard and then freeze depending on what happens. All right, so I think freezing here is great because the archer stays alive and then maybe it locks onto the tower. I think the archer might lock onto the tower right now. Yes, yes, let's freaking go. You already know archers are better than the queen. They're mean, they're pristine, and they're common for three elixir and they really do a lot. So it's nice. It's uh, exactly what we wanted. He expected me to go in. Uh, yeah, I should have just dropped it lower at this point. It's too predictable to continuously drop it high every single time. All right, he's going to go for the Archer Queen ability. We're not going uh, to say that we want to take that damage. We're just going to go for the arrows to obliterate it. Uh, bad skeletons, in my opinion. We should be able to get a very good freeze here on top of the cannon. Ah, that's going to kill my egg. The Easter egg is gone. Nice knowing it. All right, the Mighty Miner here is a little bit risky, but I think it's okay. He uses Earthquake so we can go for a little Tombstone if needed. Phoenix here. This is pretty bad, actually. I think... Fight Arrows? Mighty Miner Bomb? Mm, no, not really. Not really worth. Alright, we're gonna go for a lower Tombstone. And then try to Barbarian Barrel on top of everything else. This is not terrible, it's just not great. Not great gameplay on our end. I'm gonna be 100% transparent about it. Never gonna lie about that. Never gonna lie and say, Hey, guys, I played really well when I didn't. <laughs> not how I roll. All right, so he's going to go for a log. He doesn't end up hitting the tombstone. That's what he's trying to hit. He misses some of the archers too. Very nice. Now we can go for a graveyard with a freeze. Probably going to rail delivery on the archer. I don't think I'm going to keep that alive. He's going to rail delivery and log. We're going to freeze. He hit the fire spirit. Sick. That's what I needed. <laughs> you guys will never hear someone celebrate in a mobile game like me. Okay, okay. We're going to go for a phoenix here. We got to go mighty minor. We have to make this happen. I missed it. He missed it as well. He's there. Not terrible for us. Not terrible. Because he doesn't have Earthquake and Cycle now, so it's going to be harder for him to defend. Going to Rail Delivery again. Has to. Has to. Has to Rail Delivery. Phoenix stays alive. The Skeleton Swarm in the tower. That's huge. Gigantic value. Now he doesn't have Earthquake, so we can go for a lower Tombstone. Very big. We go Archers. We go for another Graveyard. And then we freeze on top of the, the Archer Queen. If I had Tornado, I would pay so much Elixir for a Tornado right now. Not going to fib. I would pay so much Elixir for a Tornado. I go for Arrows as well. I might have messed up. I might have overcommitted. Skeletons are going to give us a lot of damage, though. Okay. We need to be able to defend this. I go for a Barbarian Barrel. I go Archers. We're actually going to freeze our defense, just to guarantee that we don't take too much damage. And then we should be able to win. Assuming I get a Tombstone down and pull everything back. And then Barbarian Barrel. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna win the game. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna win it. I'm gonna win the last game of the day. Let's freaking go, baby. Woo. All right, we beat the pro player and we beat a really good player as well. Congratulations, man. Like you, you really stretched my mechanics. You stretched my limits and you made me drop the most optimal tombstone placement. And hopefully that taught you guys if you didn't know how to play that. If you didn't know what I was talking about. If you guys haven't seen that before, that's what you have to do. Let's go. <laughs> all right, all right. GG's and well played. Well played, well played. So those are great games today. Huge shout out to Raid Shadow Legends for making this possible. Congratulations on the people that won. Make sure that you guys, you know, send your Discord to Darian and Darian will get my, um, get all the info sent to me so then I can send you guys your money that you earned over PayPal. If you guys enjoyed this and you're watching just for Clash Royale, make sure to drop a like on the video. It goes a long way. It promotes it to more people so then I can do this more frequently. Liking the video means that the video gets, you know, sent out to way more people. So definitely, definitely do that if you haven't already. So that is a huge, huge W, guys. Lots of love to everyone that showed up a part of this stream. Like the video for free. And then also download Raid Shadow Legends in the description of the video. If you download Raid Shadow Legends using the description of the video and complete the tutorial, it helps me out a lot. Now we're going to go to Raid Shadow Legends and show you guys why I like this game so much. I am one of the few people that uh, in Clash Royale that plays this every single day. I know that Ash does. I got into it because of him. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to show you guys everything about it. All right. Jumping on to the next one. Let's go, let's go. Nice, juicy, delectable Ws, my dudes. Okay. <laughs> nope, I went to the wrong, I went to the wrong page. Went to the wrong page. There we go, we did it. <laughs> Woo, let's go, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Wow, six of you have already downloaded and completed the tutorial. Thank you, guys. Six people already. You guys are legends. So if you see in the bottom, the bottom bar shows how many people completed everything. There's a lot of um, things that you guys can earn by completing um, tutorials, completing levels. I'll show you guys everything as we start to uh, go through. Right now, I need to do a black screen as we adjust and switch the screen really quick so you guys don't see my personal information that might pop up on my camera. A little bit scared about that, not going to lie. Okay, we're good. Very nice. You know, last time I leaked my parents' uh, phone number, not on, not on uh, this, but uh, like four years ago when I was like 16 or 17 years old or whatever. I don't know. It was a long time ago, actually. It wasn't four or five years ago. But I, I leaked my parents' phone number because I called my mom on stream because I won a million grand challenge cards live. It was probably one of the lamest things you'll ever see in your life. But I legitimately leaked my parents' phone number on stream in front of everyone. Imagine being me. Imagine doing that. That that was the most embarrassing thing on that I've ever done in my entire life. You guys can let me know down in the comment section if you guys have done anything comparably stupid, but I highly doubt it. I bet you guys are all more intelligent than me. All right, so also, by the way, there's a double legendary event going on if you guys play raid. We are going to be summoning today and trying to get a legendary. I haven't hit legendaries in a while, so I think I will hit a legendary. I have five sacred shards saved up for this stream. And if you guys don't know, I'm literally level 44. I play this game every single day and I have logged in for over a hundred and, um, well, I've logged in for 91 days. As you guys can see, I've completed all the other logins. I'm at 92 days in a row. And then also on top of that, if you guys look at my stuff, I am a free to play player still. And I have level 60 champions. <clears throat> I have Tyrell. I have Fushan, who is a legendary that I unlocked on stream with you guys. And then I also have Frozen Banshee. So we're going to be breaking down how this game works. It's basically a hero collector game or a champion collector game where you guys can complete a whole bunch of different quests. You go to your daily quests. You're able to level up your champions, level up your levels, and you, you, you go through these every single day. It's kind of like... Uh, a more fun and brainless thing to do is just complete these quests. And then if you want to go big brain mode, you can compete dungeons or complete dungeons to get artifacts and equipment to empower your champions and make them stronger. So like you go to Dragon's Lair and you're able to complete that and get pretty far. Um, you're able to go to all these different uh, things and complete them. We'll be showing that today. 
Um, there's an arena where you can play against real people head to head and see if your teams and your strategies and your, your combinations are better than other people's. And then um, there's also a tag team arena where you can compete with multiple teams against other people's teams, just basically arena, but a little bit higher end. There's also clan bosses where you can compete with your clan to knock out these big, heavy, huge monsters. And if you beat these, you get huge rewards. And then you can also unlock the, like sh sacred shards and other stuff there as well. So if you guys didn't know, like right here, you can get the yellow sacred shards as well just by crushing the clan boss and being free to play. Once you get all the way up there, that's generally how you farm a lot of sacred shards um, and get to summon le legendary champions. There's the campaign, which has an interactive storyline, essentially, and you guys can complete it all the way from normal all the way to Nightmare. So if you guys want to see, um, I have already done normal all the way, 252. I've completed hard. I've completed brutal as well, 252 completely maxed out stars, and I've gotten the sacred chart from there. So as you can see, I play this pretty much every day, and uh, yeah, I, I have progressed pretty quick with this. So there, the main resources that you have, you have energy in the top right. And the, the energy allows you to complete the dungeons and all this stuff. And it allows you to expend um, your energy to get, um, get through battles. So I'll just show you guys a quick illustration of what it's like. Really quick. So let's go here. And let's play this stage. So right now I'm going to use my Tyrell. And I'm going to use my Miscreated Monster. And we'll show you guys what that's like. Typically, I play this on autoplay so the matches or the battles go faster. But I'm going to turn it off autoplay and we will just show you guys what it's like. So right now, I can use this ability. Right here, you can like uh, hold it down and see what it does. It attacks all enemies. So it's like an AoE attack. So it's able to do a lot of damage here. And you can look like the animation. You can zoom in. You can see everything as you guys fight. It's kind of cool. That's really, really cool. Why are you so good? Uh, I've just played this game a lot, and I'm still not the best Raid Shadow Legends player, but I love the game. I really do. All right, we're going to go and switch the game title to Raid Shadow Legends as well, because I don't want to um, have the wrong game there. Make sure that that's all set. We're chilling. We're vibing. We're thriving. We're going to use Miscreated Monster, and we're going to go and whack those campaign little goons, those little hounds. We're going to wreck everything here, and we are popping off. Let's go. So, as you guys can see, the lizard men uh, do pack a little bit of a punch, unfortunately. But, it's all good. We're just going to make sure that we go and uh, do some extra damage. We're going to be able to stun everything. We're going to go and use our hard-hitting preemptive strike. And we've got Tyrell in a lifesteal set, so each amount of damage that he does, he also um, is able to heal up the damage that he does. So, it's quite nice as well, if you guys didn't know. Um looking through and then trying to assess what we want to do. Yeah, we're going to go and use our It's Alive, which does continuous heal and ally protection. So then we have a little bit more sustain in this dungeon or in this campaign battle. For anyone new, Kale is the best starting champion. 12-3 uh, Brutal is the best for farming. Yes, Cyan, that is exactly it. If you want to use a different champion in your start, you can if they look cooler. But generally, I would suggest you guys to use Kale. So Kale is the first starter champion. Um, generally the order is Kale, Elhane, um, and Galek is usually last, but Galek is also pretty good if you want to use him. Um, I, I, I think that it, generally all the champions are good. No matter what you pick, you can't really go wrong, but Kale is the one that is generally used the most. And Elhane is used at the end game the most because she's, uh, she does a lot of damage. All right. Yeah, dude, I love raid. When can we play against you? Uh, you guys can play against me the next time I do the stream. All right, already. Let's keep grinding. Let's keep going. Sir Tag the Goat. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks for being here, man. All right. We are continuing to pop through. But yeah, if you guys haven't already, download Raid Shadow Legends using the link in the chat. If you guys download using the link in the chat or in the description of the video, it goes a long way and it does support me. So I'm going to spam the link in the chat. You can also download in the QR code. If you download in the QR code in the left-hand corner of the screen, then um, it does give back to the community and it helps me out. All you have to do is complete the tutorial. Let's go, let's go. All right, so we're going to go and use our preemptive strike to finish off this last guy. Oh, wait, I forgot that he was invulnerable for a second. I just wasted it. <laughs> I'm a bit of a failure, my dudes. We should be able to knock him out, though, and we do slap him silly. So, 
we are going to go and use our continuous heal um, whenever we get the chance. Um, we're going to go and use our AoE ability. And then we'll see what this what these guys are doing. They're just going to probably do basic auto attacks on us, which isn't exceptionally scary. But as you guys can see, we're kind of going through a very nice... Uh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. We're going through this campaign battle quite quickly. Um, we're going to be able to finish that off. If you guys wanted to, you could always click auto and then you could do 2x for an even faster campaign farm. Um, yeah, that's what's up. Can you suggest a, um, yeah, if you ever want to do that, just type in like, you know, sir tag and then whatever deck you're looking for. And then there's always going to be a deck for you. If you ever want suggestions, best way of doing it is just using the YouTube feature. All right. So we should be able to kill everything here with a preemptive strike. Nice. Being able to decrease the turn meter of things, make sure that they can't attack. So they're kind of just sitting there like bent over. Look at that. Look at that little goon guy. The lizard man. He's just chilling there. He doesn't know what to do. All right, so we're going to go and use our It's Alive for ally protection. Then we're going to go and slap the guy that is um, already um, stunned. I probably shouldn't have slapped the guy that was stunned. That was probably the worst decision I could have done, not going to lie. <laughs> Just to be real for a sec, I don't think that was the smartest decision that I've had here today. But it's all good. We're going to be able to use our AoE ability and hopefully clean up everything. Ooh, barely keeps them alive. That's unfortunate. It's all good. We should just be able to use our lightning storm and then slap them down. Very nice stuff. Okay, so we're on the last stage. Can we crush these little dungeon critters? All right, already. So we're going to go and slap that. Also, if you guys have any questions about my real life or anything else, let me know in the chat. Uh, I want to have conversations with you guys and, you know, actually be able to answer questions instead of stuff that we've already talked about recently. All right. Let's go, let's go. We're going to go and empower our, our uh, champions here. And then we should be able to use our preemptive strike to finish off one of those guys on the left. How many girlfriends have you had before? I have only had three girlfriends before, including the one that I have right now. Actually, you could say two depending on um, how serious the other one was. I've only had two serious relationships, including the girlfriend that I have right now. Um, I just never really wanted to enter into a relationship with someone that um, I didn't really feel like super compatible with. So kind of just had like fun times with them, but not necessarily relationships. You like football. Are you talking about soccer or like American football or actual football? I don't like really either of them that much, but yeah, they're, they're kind of, they're fun sports and I respect the sports because they're hard to play, but I, um, I don't really um, love them from a plain perspective on my end. All right, so we crushed the critter. Let's go. Lizard man down. I love the death animations too. If you guys see me zooming in and watching all the battles, the artwork in Raid Shadow Legends is pretty cool. My lightning storm is able to hit them, but it doesn't hit that hard. We should be able to finish one of those guys off and then use our abilities one last time to power through and finish these um, lizard men off. So we're going to go and do that. We're actually just going to use our, our A1 or our ability 1 to finish off the lizard man. And then... Use our third ability because it hits super hard. Decreasing the turn meter, increasing us by 1,000 HP. That's always a vibe. So, unfortunately, he's not taking any damage right now. <laughs> a little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. I thought that the um, I thought that the decrease would still go through when he had the uh, shield up, but I guess I was wrong there. That was my fault for sure. We do end up finishing him off, and we three-star the campaign battle. Looking at that, we ended up getting an offense set. Um, it's common, so I'm just going to sell it. You can always just click on this and then sell it. Not really worth um, the artifact to keep. But as you guys can see, that is uh, the campaign. And you can get through the campaign, go all the way to the very end, and beat the final boss. Let's show you guys the final boss really, really quick. If you guys haven't seen it before, I will show you guys it. It's pretty fun. So I'll slap it. I'll slap it so quick. It's not even going to be uh, not even gonna be a contention here. We'll use our Apothecary and also our Fushan. Let's go, let's go. So our Fushan right here, he has an ability that he can just kind of attack everything. So notice how he just nuked that. He wrecked it. And then Apothecary comes through and does the rest of the damage. So Fushan right here, our big le legendary lizard. Look at that. His shred ability just shreds all the defenses. And then Apothecary attacks three times at random. All right. So we're just going to get through that. We're just going to keep auto attacking because it doesn't really matter. And then Fushan should be able to put in some work. Let's go, Fushan. Put in that damage. So now, we can start to farm all the way out. Hello, sir. I love your videos. Keep up the good work. Here's some love. Thank you, Rust, for the uh, support. Really do appreciate it. And lots and lots of love. 
Can you give advice about, um, yeah, so if you're playing against that deck, generally what you want is you want to make sure that you are poisoning on top of it, minoring on the towers, um, not necessarily giving the expo any chance to lock onto your tower. But you can just, you know, Google that on my YouTube channel and then find out videos and more advice. Do you have any siblings? Yeah, I have a brother and a sister. They're both incredible human beings. They're very, very nice people. Very fortunate to have them in my life. There's nothing that replaces family, guys. Okay, so here's the boss. Here's the final... Um, the final guy on normal mode. So I've beaten normal before. I'm just going to do this to show you guys. But as you guys can see, we are wrecking him. So I was playing on Nightmare. So it was really, really hard for me to complete the campaign. This is going to be a bit easier for me. I just wanted to show you how cool some of the artwork is in Raid. Like, I just think this is awesome. We're going to be able to damage him down and just watch the death animation too. Like he falls in the background. I don't know. I think that just hits different. I love their attention to detail with the artwork. It's definitely quite cool. So we showed you that, we showed you all that stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the things that you will earn if you, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put the uh, clan boss on auto mode while I talk about this. So right here, this is my uh, clan boss team with Tyrell, um, Stag Knight, Fushan, um, Frozen Banshee, and then also a Miscreated Monster. So I'm gonna put this on auto while we talk about all the things that you guys can get. So this is the clan boss. If you guys are looking at it, it's pretty cool. Um, as we complete that, I will show you guys what I was talking about. Would you mind raiding my raid team? I have War Maiden, Kale, War Priest, and High Katoon. I think that's a great, great team. Um, High Katoon gives you pretty good speed. War Maiden gives you the drop defense. Kale gives you poisons. Um, free to play friendly team. Great team in my opinion. Obviously, I'm not extremely good at raid. I've played for about 90 days. And from all Ashes videos that I've watched, that's a very strong team. So yeah, if you guys haven't downloaded Raid, you guys can download using the QR code in the bottom left. It does support me. You can download using the description link, or you can download right now the, um, the link that I'm about to spam in the chat. You can download using that. If you download using my link, it obviously supports me a lot. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that's doing that. Um, meanwhile, there's some other stuff. So there's a Valentine's Day event. If you guys look at the, uh, the second link that I just posted in the chat, if you download Raid, and then you go to the Valentine's thing that I'm showing right now. Um, you are able to... Where is it? Here it is. You're able to um, do this between February 14th and March 14th for new users only. You download the game using that link. You put in your raid ID. And then you get an access to get a whole bunch of different prizes. So I'm going to talk about the prizes in a second. I just want to make sure that I have everything up and I don't, you know, say the wrong stuff. I want to make sure that you guys know exactly what's up. Um, but essentially, you put in your player ID and you set on this heartfelt quest running from February 14th to March 14th, which is right now. And you play in one of the Valentine's Day themed mini games for a chance to win some fantastic in-game prizes and real life prizes, including a Valentine's Day themed raid champions and even Amazon gift cards all the way up to $1,000. So $1,000 of Amazon gift cards, which I think is pretty cool. If Raid is offering that, um, all you have to do is go to the link that I posted in the chat after you already downloaded Raid, and you will get the chance to be able to make that happen. So um, yeah, I'll post that in the chat real quick again. You have to download Raid first using my link in the um, description the the, uh, of the video. You download using the pinned comment or download using the link in the chat. And when you do that, then you can go to the um, the thing that I'm posting in the chat right after the link, you put in your raid ID and then you get access to potentially winning a thousand dollars of free prizes in Amazon gift cards and a whole bunch of other stuff in game as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And if you're an existing raid player, I'll show you guys a promotion code that I think is also really awesome as well. I'm super excited to show you guys that. Um, it's ST Valentine 23. I'll be posting that in the promo code section very shortly. Um, but yeah, the Valentine's Day thing is pretty awesome. I like that as well. Um, if you download Raid right now using my link, by the way, there's a reward package for new players. So new players, everyone that's new in playing this game is going to have the ability to get this. So this new package, four energy refills, four magic potions, four XP magic brews, and then also the epic champion. So Kellen the Shrike is overpowered like a real it's not like extremely overpowered but it's a really 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 good champion early on and it works in doom tower 
all the way up to the highest levels in the game. So this champion is great. It's a great champion to unlock early on. Good time to download because you're going to get four energy refills, which allow you to, you know, replenish your energy and get through the campaign a little bit faster. And any epic champion at the very start that you unlock for free is always good. Another thing is if you use my, my code and everything and you reach level 12, specifically using my link in the chat or in the description or the QR code, then you're going to get the champion Rector Draft. And Rector Draft is unbelievably strong. Like this champion is one of the best champions in the game for epics. So this is what you really want. If you're actually committed to playing raid and you get the epic still to skill tomb, the 200,000 silver, and then the rector draft, the thing that I just posted or I just showed on the screen, um, that's what's broken. This champion, the rector draft, the one in the bottom left, she is such a strong support and she will carry you through the game. So highly, highly encourage you guys to get her out of... Um, so Hell Hades is a content creator um, for Raid Shadow Legends, the biggest and best content creator in my opinion. And he ended up um, showcasing like all these champions and he has Retro Draft four out of five stars out of all the champions in the game, including legendary champions. So yeah, Retro Draft is a great champion to unlock. So if you are committed to playing Raid and you reach level 12, you will not be disappointed. Um, if you're struggling at the earlier levels and then you hit level 12, you'll notice a huge difference. In my opinion, that's uh, that's what's up. Anyway, we are able to show you guys the clan boss in the background there. Um, we're just going to try to go and complete all of these missions early on. And um, we're also going to try to go and summon a legendary champion on stream. That's what I want more than anything. I really, really want a legendary champion. I don't know if we're going to be able to hit it, but it would make me pretty happy. So, um, yeah, if, if that's possible, that would be a vibe. I, uh, I'm optimistic that it will work out. But we'll see. We have uh, five shots to do it. So we're going to start off with one right now. We're going to roll the dice and pray that we get it. Give me the RNG, guys. Give me a legendary champion. We do not. We get Jingle Hunter. I think he's an okay champion. He is an attack champion from the High Elves. He's just not who I wanted. So we will go again soon as we complete a little bit more in the game. And uh, yeah, that, that was uh, that, that's still getting an epic. If you summon with a sacred shard, you're still getting something good. It's just not exactly what I wanted because if I get a legendary, then I get two of them in the extra legendary event today. So that's what I'm gearing up for. That's what I really, really want. So we're going to go and take our mystery shard as well. And then we're going to show you uh, competing against real life people. So these people have created teams and we're going to try to play against them. So if we look at the battles... I think the person with the lowest team power is the person that we want to play against first. And we're not going to start on auto. We're going to think through every decision that we have. Hopefully, we can pop off and win. If you guys have any questions, also let me know in the chat. I'll be trying to answer as many as I possibly can. As many as I can today. All right. Let's go. Let's go. So we're going to go and use Fushan's abilities right now. We're going to go and use our uh, claws to be able to desecrate everything. Look at that. You guys saw how hard hitting that was? That was insane. And we're going to go and use our next AoE ability with our miscreated monsters next attack. And then we're just going to finish everyone off with a preemptive strike. Easy win. You guys see that? That wasn't even close. We dominated another opponent. So that's a good W. That's a good W. All right. So this team is a little bit scary, but I think we can maybe take it on. We might lose, but we'll have to wait and see. Let's go. So, oh, I didn't mean to click auto. My bad. All right, so we're going to go and use our AoE ability with our Lightning Storm. This team is much more of a challenge, and he is really hurting me right now. We're going to go use an, our AoE ability as well to get some extra damage. And then he's going to go and revive everyone. That's not a vibe. That is not what we wanted, my man. We're going to go and use our Shred ability to hopefully be able to finish off his healer. And then... I think we're going to go and use our ability just to get the continuous heal so we can maybe get our uh, miscreated monster back to a decent health. We're going to go and use our preemptive strike. He's probably going to take it with his um, death ultimate death knight. Yeah, the, the ultimate death knight, this guy right there on the left-hand side, he retargets the attacks from the enemies that we want to kill back to him. So we're barely going to lose this one. Our Tyrell does hit like a tank, but he is going to tank this game, unfortunately. 
<laughs> Ultimate Death Knight, why are you so strong? Also, if you guys didn't know, the good thing about Raid Shadow Legends is they're constantly giving out free legendary champions. So this Ultimate Death Knight that we're losing to right now, that is a free legendary champion that you just get by playing the game that they gave away. So even though like some people might be like, oh, it's like easy, it, like it, you can't beat legendary champions, or you're never able to do that. There's so many legendary champions that they give for free that you will be able to unlock just by playing the game. So you won't have to worry about that. You will always be able to contend with everyone else if you just want to play for free and have fun that way. So we're gonna go and refresh and see if we can get anyone new. So this guy's got a Prince Kaimar, which is a very strong champion, but I might be able to win this if I play it well. Uh, actually, no, he's got uh, God Seeker Hanari, so that's pretty scary. Another Ultimate Death Knight player here as well. Let's go and fight the High Katoon and Kale instead. What is your favorite game of all time? Um, so th the games that I play generally are pretty fun for me. Um, this is one of my f favorite games that I play on mobile every single day. Um, if you guys didn't know, I uh, play Raid on my PC as well. I have it set up where I have um, it on my PC auto-battling when I leave and I go and do work. And then I come back and then I check out what's been happening in a raid when I come back. So that's another thing that you can do is you can play raid on mobile or PC as well. So it's just a pretty cool um, concept that you'll always be able to play this wherever you want. All right. Your videos are an awesome guide. Yo, dude, I'm really happy to hear that, man. All right. So we're going to go and pile through and try to get some nice damage here as well. So we're going to go and use our second ability because it has a um, AOE attack on everything. And then we're going to pop through with our Singing Steel to finish off everyone off. Notice how they're like kind of invisible, but they're not really. Like we can see them. They're not that scary. You're trying to hide from me. We're trying to play hide and seek, but it's not really working out so well for you, brother. It's not crushing me right now at all. All right, all right. Let's go. Let's crush it. So we hard chilling out here. I think we can go in for our ability here with our shred and then get some extra damage as well and then maybe pop through with hmm yeah i think i want to just go and attack um maybe the rector draft and finish her off wow it didn't finish her off huh i thought it would all right let's just go and heal everyone up a little bit ally protection as well always nice that's so much heal it's so much heal it's crazy he ended up dying but he still gave us a lot of value it's okay. It's okay if you die, dude. I'm proud of you. Bushan's going to finish him off. He's going to say, goodbye, sayonara, sir. Rhonda hits like a truck. Rhonda does hit like a truck. She's not actually my favorite champion, but she is a legendary champion. So ob objectively, legendary champions are pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. If you have Rhonda, I wouldn't consider booking her. I wouldn't upgrade her too much. Like I would level her up to level 60. Um, for sure, but I wouldn't invest my legendary resources in booking her up or anything like that. All right. So we should be able to go and crush his high Katoon here in the middle, and we win that. Let's go. We got a victory, guys. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Hell yeah. What's this up? All right. So we're going to go and beat his Shatterbones, Kale, and then his Duchess, Lulu, too. I think the Duchess is pretty strong. The Duchess is definitely pretty strong. All right, so ideally what happens here is we're able to go and use our ability and finish everything off or optimally do some nice damage. And then... Hmm, a little bit scary, a little bit scary, not gonna lie. How do I collect things? I'm level 15, but even the screen doesn't show that I downloaded from your link um, and I did the thing on the website. So how do you collect things? I'll show you everything real quick. I forgot to show you guys what um, how to collect all of the uh, the free things. Um, that's my fault. Thank you for letting me know. If I ever mess up and I don't show you guys some things, or if you're a little bit confused, let me know so I can correct it because I want this experience to be as good as possible for you. And I also want you guys to understand why I like the game. And if you guys don't get the full experience, then that's on me. So I'll help you out, man. Is there a storyline in Raid Shadow Legends? Yeah, you can check out the campaign and there's some pretty cool stuff there. So obviously being able to go through and win all those battles and beat some of the harder bosses there's a huge amount of storyline in the doom tower there's there's a lot of endless content and the good thing about raid is they're always adding new things to the game like you will never run out of things to do and you will never be bored playing this game just because there is always something to upgrade there's always a team that you want to enhance you build different teams for each dungeon that you play against which i'll be showing you guys very shortly we'll be going through each dungeon today and we'll show you guys what's up 
after we uh, complete these daily tasks quite quickly. Actually, I'm going to go auto just to finish this one off. I don't know if we're going to win this one, so I just want to be able to get this one done a little bit faster while I respond to you guys. So yeah, um, generally, uh, Raid Shadow Legends, it, there's there's a couple different dungeons that I'll be talking about today. So one of the dungeons that um, that is kind of scary is like the dragon. So if you guys have seen the dragon, it's pretty much iconic to Raid Shadow Legends. Um, you need to have poison damage if you really want to beat it at a higher level right here. This is the uh, dragon. We'll just show you guys how to uh, beat like, let's do this one. Let's do this star. So we have a frozen Banshee, which is extremely good against the dragon. So dragon is probably one of the most iconic ones in raid. Um, we'll be talking about it very shortly. I want to make sure that I have everything up. Okay, here it is. Yeah, when I, when I, when I talk about the dragon, I want to make sure I give you guys actual uh, details that I wrote down. It's got like fire breath. It decreases your attack. So the dragon will eat you alive if you're not prepared. So that's generally why you want to have someone like the frozen Banshee that we... So um, this is our Tyrell just attacking with his A1. Um, the dragon has fiery breath, so it decreases your attack, right? So champions that can sap the dragon's attack and defense is a good um, idea. And anyone that has poison is the best. I really, really enjoy poison with our um, with our ability of using our frozen banshee. So our frozen banshee right now that just attacked with the phantom touch, that blessing right here, the girl in on the far right, right next to our monster with the little um, like lightning rod, that thing does so much damage. And as you can see, the debuffs in the top left corner show two poisons. So she's got a lot of poisons on top of them. We're going to use our Tyrell and our finishing blow with our um, preemptive strike. And look at the dragon. Decreases our attack, and we barely finish him off there with our last attack. So as you guys can see, like there's a lot of strategy that goes into building a team that can beat dragon and um, different dungeons, depending on what you fight against. And each dungeon is a little bit different. So the dragon decreases attack. It's a little bit annoying when you play against it. Then we also have the Fire Knight here. Let's see if he's unlocked this time. Yeah, Fire Knight's Castle. The Fire Knight has a massive shield. So when you play against the Fire Knight with this huge shield, it's going to be difficult to break through, so you need something that can attack multiple times. So you want to have champions that can do multiple hits to break through the guy's shield. Otherwise, you'll have absolutely no way of dealing damage to him, even with your strongest champions. So, like, for instance, our Fushan, who was able to attack multiple champions at once and do multiple hits, is really good against Fire Knight because he's able to attack so many times with his multiple abilities, and then, because he attacks multiple times, the shield gets bursted down, and then, because he doesn't have the shield anymore, we can do real damage to his hull. Um, Aethel, multi, Aethel's multi-tasks, or multi-hit attacks, who is a starting champion, does really well in the Fire Knight. She's perfect for breaking down the Fire Knight's shield, so you can bring her along, or anyone else that is able to do multi-hits multi against the Fire Knight. This is the Fire Knight that we're playing against right now. Um, we'll be showing you guys how to beat that. Um, let's go and just use this. And then we're going to use Fushan's ability uh, just to break through that wave really fast. All right, so we want to be able to multi-hit it. Um, it's going to be harder for us to... Uh, do actual damage to him until he gets his shield down. So notice in the, the the far right corner, it says four. That's how many shields he has. So we broke his shields with our Fushan, right? Notice how it has zero shields right now. That's what your strategy is if you want to get optimal value against this. And now, because he doesn't have a shield anymore, we're able to do real damage to his hull. Look at how much damage I was able to do. I decreased his turn meter so he can't attack now. And now we're going to slow him down again and reduce his turn meter again. So now he's just not moving, and we're incessantly just getting more and more damage on him. So as you guys can see, you break down the shield with your multi-hitter like our Fushan, and then you get to the hull of the dungeon, dungeon dude, and then you're able to kill him. So that's how we were able to conquer Fire Knight. So I'm just going to keep breaking down like more of a sequence of how to beat most of these. Um, Spider, <laughs> this is the creepiest one. By the way, my girlfriend plays Raid, or she played Raid quite a bit. She actually is like level 40, by the way. I don't know how she was higher level than me for the longest time. A little bit embarrassing, not going to lie. And um, she's, she's like, wait, you get sponsored by this game? You play this game? I'm like, yeah, I do. I actually really like it. And she's like, well, I'm better than you. Was, she, she flexed on me for so long, and it annoyed me. Anyway. Um, we are going to be going and trying to conquer the spider real quick. 
the spider has a whole bunch of smaller spiders. And if you don't kill the smaller spiders, what happens is the spider eats the smaller spiders alive and then it regains health. So you need powerful AOE attack to squash all the smaller spiders. If you squash all the smaller spiders, then what happens is then the spider doesn't get that much health. Notice how the spiders are poisoning my Fushan. My poor Fushan deserved a better life, man. We're going to go and use our lightning AOE attack from our miscreated monster, and then we were able to finish everything off. So we're going to use our apothecary and try to heal up our Fushan because he took so much damage. <laughs> he deserved better. We're going to use our singing steel from our, um, from our Tyrell, and then we're just going to try to continuously power through this. We're going to use our Fushan ability with our frightening claws, and then we're going to just continuously attack here. So we're going to use our Hunt's Master because it does some AoE. And then we're going to just keep piling through and attacking the big spider boy. So as you guys can see, the spider is probably one of the more difficult things to deal with. Like, this is one of the hardest dungeons in the game if you don't have a team properly equipped to deal with it. Because it's about to get a ton, and I mean a metric ton, of little itty bitty spiders that are going to pop and heal up the big spider. If I don't end up getting a big AoE attack soon. I'm actually a bit scared here. All right, so we're going to go and use... Uh, yeah, let's just go and use that and just keep everyone alive with ally protection. We're going to take a slightly less damage. Then we're going to go and increase our speed and boost our team turn meter and then attack a little bit more. We're going to go and use our actual hits that don't do AoE on the actual spider. And then our AoE attacks we will use on the spider. We're going to use the preemptive strike and decrease the turn meter of the spider. I think it's going to pop and then it's all going to, um, it's going to become, uh, it's going to get healed up soon. So we need to use our lightning storm to damage down the spiders before they start healing up the big spider. As you guys can see, that's what our game plan is every time. And then our Fushan did take a lot of damage, but he's still back in business. We're going to use our shred ability. We're going to re uh, reduce the um, defense of the spider and then we're going to continuously attack it again. So that's what we're vibing with right now. Um, we only have our A1, which can decrease a little bit of the spider's stats, but its debuff was, um, so the debuff was blocked from the spider, so that's huge for us, actually. We can maybe go and attack the big spider again, trying to, um, increase our turn meters as much as possible. Um, I'm just going to use the Apothecary three random attacks. Unfortunately, not all three attacks went on this big spider, but what, what can you do? Sometimes it doesn't work out. We're going to go and shred all the little spiders, and they're going to go and pop. This is not for the faint-hearted, guys. If you don't like spiders, this dungeon is not for you. But I love squashing these spiders. I love wrecking them. I love getting the good gear. By the way, the spider dungeon gives you accessories for your team. So you're able to equip your team and be a lot stronger. So if you want to take your team to the next level, conquering spider is a necessity. And you need to have AoE champions to be able to do that. That's, um, and then also decrease, um, decrease turn meter. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, but I'll show you a champion that I really, really like for this. I didn't actually use him on this team, but I used him in the last dungeon. And um, he is by far one of the best champions in the game, and he's only a rare. So you can unlock him using uh, just casual green, green shards that are just super easy to come by. You don't really have to stress about it too much. And we're going to pop through the spider, and we won that. So yeah, these mystery shards that you get, you can go and summon with the mystery shards. And um, if you summon using mystery shards, you can still get them. So Armager is his name, I believe. And you can see right here, if we look at his skill set, he ends up having the ability to decrease the turn meter of an enemy by 30% if his attack is critical. So if you look at him, right now the way I have him built out, he has a critical hit 103% of the time. So he'll always have a critical hit for me. So he will always decrease the turn meter of big bosses. So if it decreases the turn meter of a boss, it means that the boss is um, less likely to be able to hit us and make a move. So if the boss isn't able to move and we get multiple moves before the boss gets a move, that means that the boss is going to take a ton of damage. So Armager is one of the best champions in the entire game, and he's just an uncommon. He's very easy to get, very easy to level up, and this is one of the few champions, if you get it, never feed it, never get rid of it, always use it. One of the best champions in Raid Shadow Legends. Also, uh, Apothecary that I was using there um, is a support that increases the speed of your team. Has a attack that hits three times at random, and then also can heal up your your um, heal up your team. So he's just a great champion to upgrade as well. So those are the champions. If you end up unlocking them, highly encourage you guys to use them. 
Anyway, if you guys uh, haven't downloaded Raid, um, you guys can use, you can check out the Valentine's thing and the, uh, the thing that I just posted, or you can download using the link that I'm about to post in the chat one more time. Here we go. You can download using that link and be a part of Raid. So um, we're going to go and try to collect all of these, um, all of these daily tasks. I want to be able to do that as much as I can. Um, if you guys didn't know, one thing that you can do is you can go to the market and buy things there. Um, you can buy mystery shards whenever you want, if you guys want to, like I just did. So then I can go and summon things. We're going to try our luck at another legendary champion right now. We failed last time, and we really, really want one. <laughs> so please, give me a legendary champion. I need it. No, it's an epic. Oh, uh, but it's actually, I think, I don't know. Is she good? She looks really cool. She's golden. She's OP. We'll see what Hell Hades rates her. Uh, rates her. What does he say? So he says she's more mid-tier. She's okay. But she also has some utility. She's an epic from the Demon Spawn faction. So she uh, applies po poisons and extends the duration of all debuffs on targets. So she's pretty good. She's not like the legendary that we were looking for. So I think we go for one more. I really want it. I need the legendary right now. Come on now. <laughs> okay, we are going to go and get Anya. She looks really good because she's an attack champion. She attacks two times, has a 15% chance of a grain, getting another turn. Okay, that is a broken ability. For an A1, that's insane. Uh, ability one, attacking two times, and then also having another chance of granting another turn. That's really cool. Attacks on an enemy, 20 or 80% chance of pointing a weakened debuff for three turns. Attacks an enemy, 80% chance of placing a debuff um, for defense for three turns. And then uh, accuracy in factions. So she doesn't seem like a bad champion. We'll see how she is. I think uh, she's going to be pretty good for faction wars. That's what I would guess. So yeah, she's a 3.5 out of 10. She's really good. Really, really good. So she's capable of high damage, and she has weakened a, a decrease uh, defense on a single target. So it makes her extremely high damage potential in an unkillable clan boss team. I wasn't thinking about that. So she's really good in clan boss. Then the main reason she is, so she, the main reason she's used is because she's got such high damage output, and she has enough accuracy to land her debuffs when she's ruling, running like cool sets. So that's really really cool. Did not expect her to be that good. All right, we're going to try one more. Please give me something good. That's a W for me. That is a huge win. Okay, Inox. Let's see how good he is. We also might be gemming today for the very first time because I want a legendary on stream. We will be gemming a little bit as well just to see if we can get one. But I think... Um... <laughs> Doesn't this guy kind of look like Aladdin? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of crazy. So he is also an attack champion. And he has decreased de uh, defense, decreased accuracy, poison, and weaken. So he attacks an enemy two times. Each hit has a 30% chance of placing a decreased debuff for two turns. That's really good. Attacks an enemy two times. Each hit places decreased attackers or decreased accuracy. And then attacks one enemy has a 75% chance of placing a 25% weaken uh, debuff for two turns. Heals this champion by 50% of the damage inflicted. Wow, so he has really good sustain as well. This is a great champion. This is another really good champion. So we've got some great pulls today. All right. What do you guys think? Do you think we go for one more? W? W? Zombie Aladdin? Yeah, dude, we literally got Zombie Aladdin. <laughs> let's go, let's go. That's a huge win. That's a huge win. All right, so we're going to go and unlock the uh, free three champions, and then we're going to go back, and we're going to go and... We might gem a little bit. and we, we might break our free-to-play. We've been doing free-to-play for a while. I think we might break that today. We might see if we can get a, another champion that we don't have. WWWWWW. Yeah, W's. W's in the chat right now, guys. Let's freaking go. All right, so we're going to go and get that. Nice stuff. Good looks. Good vibes. All right. Very, very nice. So we ended up getting that. Um, I think... Another thing that we want to show is we want to show how we complete the, the tasks. So we want to beat a campaign boss three times. So I think I'm going to speed run that and just use a normal one and beat it as quickly as I can. So 
Let's go and try to upgrade one of our new champions, actually. So let's use our Fushan because he attacks quite, quite quickly. And we want to go and upgrade Zombie Aladdin because Zombie Aladdin's pretty dope. And then we also want to upgrade our dark, um, our dark starter champion that we just got. I think it's Dark Aethel. Um, anyway, we're going to go and use our Fushan. We're going to go and get through this. So let's use this. Use our shred, and then let's let's power through this boss. Look at the boss. He's like, yo, Jake, you can't wreck me. You can't touch this. Da na na na. You're dead. <laughs> that was such an easy win. That made me pretty satisfied. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. That was pretty cool. We just one tapped that man. He had no business being against us. That was so easy. Oh man, that was so sick. So we're upgrading Zombie Aladdin out here. Zombie Aladdin is putting in work. Ultimate cheerleader out here. Beat the campaign boss three times. And then we're going to upgrade a champion's level in the tavern three times. So let's go and upgrade Zombie Aladdin because I like Zombie Aladdin. <laughs> Yo, this is going to probably be one of my new favorite champions in Axe. I did not have him before, so that's kind of cool. And we also have the uh, Brew, so we can just upgrade him to level 10 immediately. Yes, sirs. So always complete your daily quest if you haven't already because it gets you a ton of free stuff. So we're going to make some artifact upgrades as well. Um, we're going to go to our artifacts here and we're going to use our filter and we're going to use just new to see anything new that I like. I really like this crit rate gauntlets. So I'm going to go and upgrade that all the way to level eight. So I can press upgrade and then just upgrade it immediately. And it's successfully, I only spent 37,000 silver, so it wasn't too much. And I got my gauntlet uh, crit rate all the way to 24%. That's a pretty big upgrade when I decided to use that. And as you guys can see, we successfully completed all of the daily quests. You'll love to see it. Let's go, baby. And also, if you guys haven't done this, there are tournaments as well. So you can compete against other people in real time and see if you can finish at the top. So as you guys can see here, I was able to get 12th place in, the, in uh, my Ice Golem tournament, and I was able to unlock a lot of good rewards. Um, there's just so many different things that you guys can do on a daily basis that this game just always has things to do, no matter what you want. Zombie Aladdin for the win. Yeah, dude, Zombie Aladdin's OP. I really love him. Um, we're going to go and use the fusion, the fusion warm-up event, and we're going to go and collect all this free stuff, too. I'm not going to collect the energy yet because I, I want to use that. Um, what else do we want? I also finished first place on an event pretty recently as well, so I was really proud of that. All right. So we're going to use our last legendary thing and see if we can get it. Please give it to me. If not, we will go in gem and we will try to get it. Yo, Afrix, it's, your name is so close to the zombie Aladdin. It's cool. Give me a legendary. Give me a legendary, please. Please. Okay, it's an epic. But, oh my gosh. Dude, she looks so cool. Isn't that dope? Look at that. Damn. Damn, son. Look at that. Sarah Sack. I'm going to take a look at her, her set. That was insane, though. She looks so cool. Isn't that like the, some of the coolest artwork you've ever seen in a champion? She has so many abilities, too. Attacks on an enemy two times. 25% chance of increasing the duration of a random debuff by one turn. Attacks an enemy three times. Each hit. So she's probably really, really good against Fire Knight because she attacks so much. So I think that she's going to be great against Fire Knight because she can remove the shield. Attacks all enemies. Places a 50% chance of decreased debuff for two turns. And then she increases the crit rate in all battles. So I feel like she's probably pretty good. I don't really know her stats, but she looks like a really fun champion. So that is a win for us. That's a W. Pretty proud of that. And as I said before, we are going to go and gem a little bit because we want to get a legendary live on stream and build them up. That is the goal for us. We want that legendary because we will be able to get two legendaries on stream. So I've never ever spent money on this game before. But today, since we're on stream and I had a mission of building up a legendary, we are going to go and buy something today. So we're going to go to one of the power-up packs and do that. All right. So there's the ability of buying... Which one do we want? So we just want the legendary ones. We just want the legendary ones because those have the highest chances of getting the, um, the, they have the highest chances of unlocking. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna buy two packs. So we're gonna buy this pack right now 
with the sacred shards and then all that. And we're try to uh, hopefully, maybe, get our legendary champion. So we'll, we're going to uh, just block out the screen as I purchase this because I don't want to showcase some of my sensitive information. Um, I don't want my email and stuff to appear on the screen, but we are going to go and buy the monthly pack really quick. Hopefully we can get it. All right, so I'm going to go and purchase this. All right, one second, one second. We are going to make this happen. All right. Um, sorry about that, guys. I just want to make sure that my, um, my thing doesn't log me out really, really quick. Sorry about that real quick. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh, it worked. One sec, one sec. Okay, so I didn't show this before. We will show this now. So I just bought that pack and all the stuff that you get appears in the top right right now. So you see this? You see the little chest in the top right? You click it and then all the stuff appears there. So we are going to be jumping until we get the legendary. I really, really, really want it. We're not going to go and collect our energy just yet, but we're going to go and collect the gems. We're going to go and collect that and we're going to collect our le legendary and we're going to go and collect the, um, the void shards as well. Please give me the legendary champion. We need it today, all right? It's gonna happen. We're getting it. Sir Tag not reading chat? I, I'm reading chat, I'm reading chat. How long have you played Raid for? I've been playing this for um, over 90 days. I've been playing this a lot. And I actually considered making another channel on it with Ash and everyone else playing it. Oh! <laughs> Wait, I wanted this guy so bad. This is one of the best epics in the entire game. I'm like almost 100% sure, by far one of the best epics in the game. I remember Ash and other people talking about it. Taragi, the frog raid. Let's see his quit. Yes, he's got one of the highest ratings. Taragi, the frog is a magic, an epic magic affinity champion from the Shadowkin faction in Raid Shadow Legends. He was introduced into Raid Shadow Legends as um, when the Shadowkin champions were launched into the game, and he has some of the best control AOE provokes and interesting mechanics to lay poisons on enemies attacking him. So he is extremely strong. So he attacks enemies with a 30% chance of placing a 50% decrease uh, attack for two turns, and then he also attacks all enemies, placing a 50% provoke on his uh, debuff for one turn. So if they are provoked, then, you know, they're probably going to end up um, having the poison land on, laid on them pretty easily. So he places a shield equal to 50% of the champion's max HP and 50% ally protection on all allies except this champion for two turns. So he is by far one of the best champions in the game, and he will definitely be added to my rostered and leveled up. So that's a huge win for me. Still going to go for the legendary. We will make one more purchase. I said I was going for it. We'll try really hard today. <laughs> we want that legendary. Let's go. Let's go. Um, I'd say he's reading the chat. Yeah, no, I'm reading the chat as much as I can. We were vibing with it. Um, yeah, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. That was his girlfriend. Show some respect. Yeah, you guys know my girlfriend. Hey, let's go. <laughs> yeah, Bobasaur Doodles, OP. I love you. Hopefully you're doing well. She's out here watching and supporting, guys. Let's go. <laughs> my girlfriend's OP. All right, one sec. Um, we're going to figure out what one we want again. What one do we want? So ideally... We are go going to be able to hit that um, the sacred shard. I think this is our last chance, guys. I think we only have one more opportunity to get it. I don't think I'm going to go for one more after this. This is our, our max out. We, um, we're going to try one more time. See if we can hit that legendary. Because it would be huge. It would be massive for our account. All right. So we're going to click the black magic thing really quick so you guys don't see it. We'll see if we can get it real quick.
All right, we got it. Pray for me, my dudes. Pray for me. Or give me good vibes if you guys are lucky. If you guys are lucky. If you're not lucky, don't give it to me. We want it. We want it. So we ended up getting the other $29 purchase. And we will unlock this right now. Hoping. Praying. Maybe. Finding a way. Ooh. Ooh. Um, I might get that. <laughs> As I said before, I'm really considering making a Raid Shadow Legends channel because I do play this every single day. So I did have to gem it at one point and I figured that streaming it and doing it gemmed with you guys might be able to work out. Uh, so many things I would like to say, but thanks for the glass, great Clash Royale content. Open the door. Yeah, yeah, dude, let's go. Oh, we might get it. We might get it if we can't. It has to happen. We got to get the legendary today. It's not, we're not leaving without the legendary. <laughs> it has to go down, guys. We're getting that legendary live on stream. We're getting two of them today. We're going to get the mercy rule because we failed so hard. I believe we're going to get the mercy. <laughs> we got Wode Painted, who is not a bad champion, but it is what it is. We're going to get that legendary champion real quick. Be right back. One last attempt. Maybe we can get it today. All right, all right. We are gemming out like a madman. Never, never do this uh, in any game, but I told you guys I wanted to build a legendary on stream. I'm going to follow up with it. I will follow up with it. And also, you guys might see me do a Raid Shadow Legends second channel um, or third channel. Um, that was definitely something that I was considering doing for a long, long time. Um, if you guys would like to see that, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comment section because that is something that uh, has been on my mind for a while. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Let me know. Let me know if you guys enjoy playing this game or have seen uh, the strategy behind it and kind of like it. Uh, because, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have it on my main channel, obviously, because that's reserved for Clash Royale. But I do play this game every day and I figured might as well potentially create more content on it. Anyway, Sir Raid Channel? Yeah, dude. It's kind of just fun to vibe and chill with you guys and break through dungeons and stuff. I'm also trying to get other... Um, other cha other uh, tribe people to play the game with me. Um, so that's uh, something. Maybe I can compete against Ash. Guys, what if I compete against Ash and see who can compete a or complete a dungeon quicker? What do you guys think? You think that would be funny or nah? All right, so we've definitely hit the mercy system. We have like 10, we have 10 summons, so we will get this legendary. Um, we'll see which one we get, I think. All right, so we got Ramiro, who I've never seen before. We'll take a look at him. Ramiro the Frog raid. Hopefully he's good. Ah, he's not that good. He's a 2.5, so that was an unfortunate pull. That was our first, like, meh, not so excited pull. Please give me the legendary. We got the legendary! Oh, let's go! Let's go, baby! That's what I wanted. And I got another one too. Ha! Oh, let's go, baby. We did it. We did it. We did it. We we forced it. We forced it. We pulled so hard today. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> that makes me so happy. These are going to be massive for my account. So I pulled a legendary and I got a second one as well. All right. So that's my first I've ever spent on them. That's the first money I've ever spent on the game. Let's take a look at their stats and see how good they are. So I've never seen these champions before. So I'm excited to see how they perform. Um, Gliss. Tia raid. Let's see how she is. She's a four out of 10 or four out of five. So she's very good. We've all been there. Excited to fight an enemy in the arena with flashy abilities. And then that pesky orc comes along with a silly jaw mask and locks out the skills. Yes, I'm talking about Warlord. So apparently, she tells a lot of the arena champions to sit down. She's all about her passive, which all of her skills cannot be placed on cooldown. So outside the arena, she's an incredible for bosses like the Eternal Dragon on Doom Tower and waves against the enemy warlords. But in the arena, she becomes a powerful counter to warlords and she attempts to place the team's abilities on cooldown. There's a 50% chance it won't work. In addition, the warlord will re receive a freeze debuff that cannot be um, blocked and resisted and she'll force the enemy to uh, 
um, perform things like cleanses. So she's just like a really, really, really strong champion. And she also has powerful abilities like an AoE weaken and AoE block debuff. So right now she attacks one enemy, has a 30% chance of placing a freeze debuff for one turn. She also applies a uh, debuff spread effect, taking one random debuff from the target and placing it on all enemies under freeze debuffs. That's really strong. Places all enemies under a weakened debuff for two turns, steals a random debuff from each enemy under a freeze, and then she places a block debuff on all enemies for two turns. So she's just a really, really good defensive champion. And then she also has ally resistance in all battles, pretty high up. All right, so now we're going to look at this guy. I've never seen him before. I hope he's good. He, I don't know if he's going to be better than the, guy, the person that we just unlocked because on defense and arena... She's like S tier. She is five out of five. You cannot get a better champion than what we just got for defense and arena. So that's huge. All right. So this guy I'm a little bit scared about. I don't know how good he's going to be. Hopefully he's good. The Gaunt. Okay. So he's decent. He's not as good as the other one, but he's pretty good against the Scarab King and he's pretty good in Doom Cat Tower. So, um,. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a good chance or he's a good choice for Doom Tower content. That's a good W, guys. I'm super happy that we got a good Legendary because I was a little bit scared. I was like, are we going to get a good one or no? And we got such a good one. And doesn't she look sick? Doesn't she just look incredible? This is probably one of the coolest artworks that we've seen in Raid, in my opinion. Like, she just looks, she looks the definition of Legendary, in my opinion. So that is a massive, 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 massive win for me. And that makes me really happy. We got it. Let's go. Let's go. So uh, we're going to be leveling her up really quick. We'll show you guys what I do. So I can go um, to my tavern. I can go and click on her really quick. And then I can go and uh, just upgrade her. And just go and click on all of the red things. Click max and put her all the way to level 22. So let's see her in action and see how she pops off. So we're going to go to probably like Nightmare here. No, not so, let's not go Nightmare. Let's go normal and see how she does against maybe a Fushan, who is our other guy that we have. So we're just going to use her. Not really going to use any. Actually, let's use some of our other champions as well. Let's use Genbo and let's use. Oh, yeah, I forgot to talk about Genbo. So he's a champion that you guys can get if you um, have Amazon Prime and you link Amazon Prime to your account. So that is pretty cool. Blue Woman W. Yeah, dude, look at her. Isn't she awesome? I've never seen her abilities yet either. All right, so Genbo attacks and he does like a lot of damage. Generally, you want to um, use the increased crit rate for him. And then you can watch his uh, Heartless Blitz and watch how he just wrecks everything. Everything just dies. So Genbo is a champion that you guys can get just by unlocking um, or using Amazon Prime and then connecting that with your account. So I did that. And then um, this month, because Amazon Prime is already done with Genbo, because again, Genmo was unlocked last month, um, you can get a cruel set. Or I think we'll, we'll take a look at what it is this month, actually. I want to make sure that I'm 100% accurate with what I say. I don't want to say the wrong thing. But you guys can get a artifact set to equip your champions with to make a really strong champion setup. Blue Angel is her new name. Yeah, dude, she was so cool. Like, that that made my day. That actually made my day. Like, I'm going to go to bed smiling, and my girlfriend's going to be there. Like, you're smiling about a stupid Blue Angel in a video game. But I'm like, the Blue Angel is my dream. She is my life. She is like, that is the sickest champion ever. Like, seriously. Huge W. Watch this. So this is her third ability. Places blocks debuff on the uh, allies for two turns. Also a 60% chance of placing a freeze on all enemies for one turn. Wait, so that means that the enemies just can't even move. That's sick. And I bet I can increase that by legendary booking her. That's actually a huge W. That's a huge W. Let's go, guys. That's what's up. So we're going to use that. And we're going to go and pop off. And we should go and secure the win against the boss. So yeah, uh, I think I talked about this before. But right here... On the left, you guys can see this Amazon Prime drops. So before, I was able to get the uh, Genbo. And you guys have seen, I've been playing for months. I've been playing since December and collecting all the uh, drops since December. So I've literally done everything. <laughs> and uh, you go and you go to Amazon Prime or Prime Gaming. You get the code and then you go here. So the promo codes are on the left right here. 
and you put the promo code in there from Amazon Prime. And the, uh, uh, the promo code will be individualized and in, in whatever. Um, but here's a promo code that you guys can use for every player in the entire game. Everyone can use this. So ST Valentine. And then 23. And this code you can use no matter who you are. If you're an old or new player, you guys can use this to unlock free stuff. So it's really, really cool. I'll show you guys what you guys can get if um, you guys haven't already done that. Where is it? Oops, wrong thing. Nope. Wrong thing. Okay, yeah. So I think... Um, wait, what is it? So you get a small... You get a small Valentine's uh, package. I think it's like some, some, um, it's some ways of like leveling up your stuff a little bit faster. So it, it will help you out. It gives you a whole bunch of gold to upgrade your new champions, upgrade your new artifacts. Um, it, it's worth it. It's worth it. So it's pretty nice. Or it's silver. Sorry, not gold. I always think about gold as the currency, but it's actually silver in this game. So that's a huge W. St. Valentine um, 23, that promo code that I just posted. So again... Go to the promo codes here and then put that in. Um, always make sure that you're doing your quests on a daily basis. I showed you guys a couple of the dungeons. Um, what else do we want to show you guys? Um, we can upgrade some skills here as well. So as you guys can see, I have a... Who do I want to upgrade? I want to upgrade one of the starter champions just to show you guys really quick. So for instance, um, we really like Kale because he's one of the best starter champions in the entire game, if not the best. So I'm going to go and upgrade him, and we upgrade one of his skills. So as you guys can see, his Disintegrate um, was just upgraded there. And you guys can check out what he does by going here in the Tavern, and then clicking on Champions, and then checking out what you upgraded. So right there, we just upgraded the Disintegrate, attacks four times at random, and has a 40% chance of placing a 5% Poison debuff for two turns. That's huge. And he does a lot of damage as you continuously level him up. The other one that I really like is Elhane. When you level her up to the very late stage of the game, she pops up with, with considerable value. Great champion. Um, yeah, so as you guys can see, this came... Um, even though like some of the champions are easy to unlock at the start, they give you a lot of value and utility into the later stages of the game. So a huge, huge win there. If you guys have any questions about specific champions that you have, let me know and then I can look it up or I can tell you guys what I think about them. Let's go, let's go. All right. Heck yeah. Uh, I was watching your yesterday video and now you're live. Yeah, dude. Dude's going to be going to bed happy about uh, Blue Queen. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, guys, be more positive in the chat. Um, as I said, I was going to play uh, CR for a little bit and then I moved to Raid Shadow Legends. And, you know, that's what I do. I like playing different games on my channel. I like playing games that I enjoy. Um, I understand if you don't want to watch it or if you don't want to be here. But, you know, just be, be a nice person. Be a positive person. If you're not nice, if you're not being positive, then you probably shouldn't be here, you know? That's not, that's not how it should be, you know, guys? Just be a good human being. That's how, uh, that's how life should be in general. Um, that's how I try to operate. Anyway, um, thank you guys for everyone that's been so nice today and understanding. Um, one of the things that I like doing is I like switching it up, playing different games, and um, showing you guys what I do on my free time. Because a lot of people ask, like, what other games do you play? Raid Shadow Legends is a big game that I play almost every single day. That's, that's what's up. Um, anyway, I just wanted to make that happen. Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys like Blue Angel more than Zombie Aladdin? No, someone says Bl Zombie Aladdin is greater than Blue Angel. I agree. I think Zombie Aladdin is like, I don't know. Like, there's something special about him. You just know he's been through a lot in life. You just look at him and you're like, Zombie Aladdin, you, you deserve a little bit more appreciation here. Where is Zombie Aladdin? Oh, there he is. Zombie Aladdin. <laughs> he's part of the new Disney movie. And he's got like green poison on his uh, sickles too. So I just, I think he looks really cool. Anyway, he deserves a little bit more love and I will be giving him more love. Anyway, um, we want to show you another part of the game. So let's go to Doom Tower. I don't know if I can beat this stage actually. I think I've already tried that before. Faction Wars is another part of the game. Um, let's show you that really quick. So you can fight with the same faction as all the team that you have. So you go into battle with a faction-oriented team. Like, for instance, I have all high elves here. So I have Tyrell, I have Apothecary, I have Elhane, um, 
and then I have two other supporting champions that don't really matter that much to me. So uh, that's what's up. New players, receive your Valentine's Day gifts at the above link. Yeah, man. Thank you guys for helping me out and uh, helping everyone else out that's here. All right. National Women's Day. Dude, I didn't know that that existed. My bad, man. <laughs> You're going to give... If she's watching right now, she's going to be like, yeah, what did he do for National Women's Day? I got her flowers unprompted a couple days ago or a week ago. So that was a win for me. So maybe I can say it was preemptive for, for uh, National Women's Day. <laughs> um, anyway, we are going to be vibing here. We are going to hopefully be able to kill all of these and then pop through. All right, so we're going to go and use our A1 just to do some nice damage. And notice how she shoots twice with her A1, her first ability. Super solid. Should be able to power through the stage quite quickly with our first ability as well. And then we crush through the ranks. You love to see it. So um, I'm going to use my last ability and then hopefully hit everyone with an AoE ability. Unfortunately, Tyrell's turn meter isn't completely back yet, so he can't use his other abilities. He has to just hit everyone with his normal stuff. All right, so we're going to go and use our first ability here, and then we're going to use our last ability to attack everything else. You own a console. Yeah, I do. I own a couple. I think um, the main one that we use is the Nintendo Switch, but most of the time, I'm just like a PC and mobile gamer. I typically just play games on my phone all day, and you, know, you guys know the games I like. What time is it for you? It's 12.30 right now, so I've been playing for quite a while. I don't remember when I started playing Raid, but I think I started recently. I think I started pretty, um, I started around an hour ago. I started definitely uh, before an hour ago. <laughs> I've been playing Raid for an hour. Um, but I, I, yeah, the stream was supposed to be like around two hours. I think it's around three hours right now. So I've definitely streamed longer than I said I would. Um, but you know what? I love the game. I love what I've been doing here. And we're going to show you all aspects of the game before we end up uh, leaving today. So thank you everyone that's here and just vibing with me and uh, being a part of the extra long stream today. Happy Holly, uh, love from India. Yo, what's up, man? Wait, was, is H O L I a um, is that a, a, a holiday in India right now? Or wonder? Hmm. Get that? Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, I mean, it's cool to be able to get sponsored by games that I actually enjoy playing. That's a huge win for me. Um, can't get too much of Sir Tag. Yeah, dude. This it's nice to see that. Let's go. Let's go. You guys are awesome. Sheesh! The festival of colors. Yeah, recently jumped into Age of Empires 4 on PC, having a blast with this is Black Train. Yeah, it's so nice to be able to play games that you haven't played before. Or just jumping back into games that you haven't played in a while. But as you guys can see, we uh, destroyed that. We completely crushed that faction. We're going to go and play one more battle, and then we will end the stream today. We'll show you one more dungeon, because I think the dungeons have the absolute coolest artwork in the game. Out of everything in, in this game... I would say that the dungeons are probably my favorite part. So we'll show you and talk to you guys about one more thing. So originally we were talking about the dragon poisoning us, the fire knight with his big shield. We were talking about the spider and how that was kind of an issue, you know? Now we're going to go and show you guys the minotaur. So the minotaur is a raging bull that's got a pretty big temper. This man does not mess around that much. So we like to mess him up real good. And... He uh, has massively increasing his damage, and he's got the ability to um, place a hex that doubles the damage that you receive from his attacks. So we're gonna just auto battle till we get to the um, till we get to the Minotaur, so we can talk about it a little bit more. Survive long enough for the Minotaur's rage to wear off, and then you leave leave him in a daze, and he takes double the damage from all the attacks. So essentially, you have to out survive him with either having a shield on your team having healing, or just having really good survivability. So that's what you want on your team when you're facing the Minotaur. And that's exactly what we have. If you guys look at my Tyrell, he's in a lifesteal set, so he heals up with each one of his attacks. Secondly, we also end up having our miscreated monster, who is able to just protect our entire team. Thirdly, we also end up having huge damage with our... Uh, Fushan, that is our, our legendary champion in the middle, that just is a hard-hitting beast. So essentially what I'm trying to say is we have this covered and we're ready to show you how to conquer the Minotaur. Look at how much health he's got. Isn't that scary? Isn't that a little bit intimidating? Well, not for me. I've seen this stage a little bit too often and I'm going to show you how to conquer one of the most intimidating beasts in the game. 
This dungeon is very scary if you haven't played against it before, and I'm ready to dominate it. So our Frozen Banshee is also in a counterattack set, so she's able to do some poison damage each time she's hit, so that's always nice. Um, we're going to use our Fushan ability to damage everything down, weaken defenses, and then we're going to go and use our, um, our Frankenstein boy to do some extra damage here. So we're just trying to hit with our A1, our first ability, on top of the Minotaur, and then we're going to go and use our third ability, our Frost Blight, to be able to do some extra damage to him, shred the defenses a little bit, and hopefully be able to overcome this quite quickly. So the difficulty arises because he's got such high health. We want to make sure that we stay safe. And then we can start dealing double the damage to him. He's definitely a champion with very high health. So it's hard to break through unless you've got a cruel set like what I have on my um, Fushan. With Fushan's able to do so much damage in the cruel set. We're going to use the preemptive strike to decrease the turn meter again of the, um, the Minotaur. So he can't attack me. Notice how I'm getting multiple attacks in before the Minotaur is able to do anything because of our increased turn meter. And then... We're just going to keep piling on the damage here. Hopefully being able to finish him off. If I'm able to do this on stream, it would make me really happy. Notice the Hex. That's the scary thing. We want to survive the Hex, so then we can start to deal double damage to him. So we're just trying to heal up right now. We're not really caring about how much damage we're doing. All we want to do is survive. If we can survive, we can thrive, is what I'm trying to say. We're going to use our decreased defense. We're going to go use our AoE again. We're going to go and use our stun on top of everything. Then we're going to go and use more of our AoE abilities. And now we're piling on the double damage, as you guys saw. That is a lot of damage there. We're going to keep attacking him right now because he's a little bit weaker. And we want to make sure that we can finish him off. We're using the ignore defense. We're going to go and use this ability, the preemptive strike, to decrease his turn meter again. And notice how everything's kind of in disarray. His stuff is a lot weaker than it was before. We can go and heal up our Fushan so it doesn't end up... Um, or we're going to have ally protection. We're not going to heal him up. We're going to make sure that he doesn't die immediately. And then we're going to hopefully pile on enough damage here. A little bit scary. He's going to use the Hex. I don't know if Fushan's going to survive, guys. We want Fushan to not die. We can get the ability of the Shred. And then we can go and hopefully get back to our third ability to finish everything off. Fushan is still alive somehow. On his last leg, this guy, he's a beast. He's literally... A legendary champion for a reason and he finally falls we go and click our second ability we should be good here to just continuously pile him down so as you guys can see this is a late game boss this is a very 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 hard boss to beat and i'm showing it on stream just to show you guys the difficulty that you can get to if you start to progress this game if you wanted to you could click auto battler and then it would just progress through without you thinking about any of your decisions or anything. But I just wanted to commentate and talk to you guys and show you my thought process as we beat one of the most difficult bosses in the entire game. So, yeah, that is not easy to beat one of the last stages of the Minotaur. But we were able to make it happen. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this stream of Raid. If you guys did, definitely check out the, the, the game for yourself. If you download using the... Um, the link in the description of the video or the link that I'm about to post in the chat. Raid was generous enough to sponsor this entire stream. All the stuff that we were able to do today was would not be possible without them. Let's be clear, all right? The fact that we were able to do this very long stream late at night and also have this on top of another video that we just did, thankfully, Raid was able to make that happen for us. So definitely check out Raid if you haven't already using the link in the chat. Um, download using that link, you play through the tutorial, and if you just play through the tutorial and you don't like the game, you don't have to play anymore. But if you play through the tutorial, it helps me out, supports me, it gets you guys on the um, supporters list right below. You guys see um, right next to my face cam, hit level 12, all those things that you guys do, that uh, supports me. And then Raid is like, wait, the, his, his channel likes the game as well. And uh, if you guys like the game a lot, maybe I'll consider creating a second channel for this as well so that... That is on my radar. I know Ash did it. He was really successful. He loved playing the game and he ended up doing that. I'll probably end up doing that as well. Just want to give a huge shout out to Raid. Check out the link that I just posted in the chat. Download using um, the link in the description of the video, the pinned comment, the QR code, or the link in the chat. And um, that's what's up. Huge, huge thank you to them. And Magnum Tater, thank you for subscribing for eight months in a row, a part of the channel. I love your face, brother. You are an awesome man. Uh, sup, my good sir. I'm glad to catch another live stream. It's been a while. Keep it up, King. You are the, the Kappa Kappa Jake. <laughs> Thank you, man. Um, last thing before we go, we're going to go and check in with this. Uh, 
promotional thing for okay. Raid if you guys haven't seen this. I think it's really cool, we just looking through the artwork and the slay, level of detail that they put into their champions and all the characters. I don't know. I just, got. I'm pretty much in awe of how they're able to do that. Galek, that's one of the starter champions. I would pick Kale if you're starting off the game. I would pick Kale or Elhane. I like Kale the most. He has poison and he does the most amount of damage. He's the best champion to pick early on if you guys want to pick um, Do you do YouTube for a living? I do do YouTube for a living. I'm lucky enough to be able to do this full time. I have six people that work full time for me for editing. So we are really heavily into YouTube. And I'm so proud of the videos that we publish. So all the money that I get from the sponsorship, the money that's left over after I pay out the people that beat me and um, pay for the uh, gunning that we could in Raid, all of that money is going to go directly back into uh, the stream, the videos, the and creating more content. So it all goes you for editors do better. and upgrades Download for, the, uh, and get for this old new legendary champion Love you guys. For free. I hope everyone has an amazing rest of your day. And I will see you later, all right? Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. And I will see you guys on the next stream. Check out Raid using the link in the description of the video, the pinned comment, or the QR code. And um, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see me do more videos in the future playing against me and subscribers. So if you guys want to beat me again and have another chance of playing against me for Pass Rao, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and then um, I'll be doing this stream more often in the future. Anyway, I love you guys. No matter when you're watching, no matter where you're watching, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.